is caused by the uncertainty of the future. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. Status quo or state in limbo? The political merry-go-round seems to continue. Where do we stand today? If you ask me what's going on, my answer to you is going to be as good as yours. I don't know. We don't know. Is there a government in play currently as we speak? Who is the Prime Minister of this nation? What's going on? Are we on the right track? Are we going to face an election in the next few months or is it going to be a referendum? What is the President doing? Who holds power? To discuss all this and more and to find answers. We've invited four guests to the studios this evening as well. Let me quickly introduce them to you. Joining us tonight on the show is Mr. Gomin Dayasri, Senior Attorney at Law. Nice to have you on board, Mr. Dayasri, after some time. Also joining us tonight on the show is uh, Mr. Azad Sali, Kalama Municipal Councillor representing the United People's Freedom Alliance. Nice to have you on board as well. Mr. Sali is also... United People's Alliance? Excuse me? National Unity Alliance. Lead of the National Unity Alliance as well. All joining us tonight on the show is um, Dr. Atul Asiris Samarakon. Uh, he's uh, from the Department of Social Studies, uh, Open University of Sri Lanka. Nice to have you on board as well for the first time. Joining us tonight on the show is also uh, Aranda Ginnigay, founder chairman of Social Enterprise Sri Lanka. Nice to have you on board as well, Aranda. Let's start off tonight's show with um, Ms. Azad Sali, Kalam Municipal Councillor, uh, representing the UPFA as well as the leader of the National Energy Alliance. Uh, Ms. Sali, several weeks ago when you came on the show, you said, when I asked you a question about uh, whether the president is going to join hands with uh, uh, former president uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa, you said no. And then you came on the show and said there was no option left but for him to join hands with uh, a former president Mahindra Rajapaksa. But looking at what have transpired since 26th of October, do you think it's justifiable for us to have this process in play right now? Do you think why must the people face the brunt of all this and more? Your time starts now. Um, Samir, how all this started was there was a sellout of the country to various countries from time to time which the president had been warning all of them at every cabinet meeting. We saw several cabinet uh, papers coming in which was not very conducive or good for the country. And you saw how the decision to hand out the East uh, Terminal to the Indian uh, government. So these things were all told, but never it was adhered to. So president could not go ahead with them. He had to take a decision for the sake of the country. He took that decision, but the decision is not uh, acceptable by most of the people because earlier we see Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa who, has, who was defeated by the people being again bought in. So this is why we always said we want a government without Mahindra and Ranil both. Right? This is the thinking of the people. I am saying this is the thinking of the people. If, why did this government come in in the first place was the 11 years of corruption of the Mahindra Rajapaksa regime. That, is, that was the biggest accusation that people were uh, uh, saying about the previous government. But then the good governance government came in. What did they do for three and a half years? It was only a sellout. And a hand uh, full of people were controlling the economy and bringing in their friends. And the people who robbed with the Rajapaksa regiment were brought into the country. And again, they were given priority. Right? Where was the investment? There were no investment coming into the country. Right? What, what were they doing? They were doing nothing. Be, now see, whether anybody likes it or not, when Mr. Rajapaksa was again appointed as the Prime Minister, we saw the tea boutique fellow reducing the price of tea. We saw the commuters reducing the bus fare. We saw people reducing the bath packet prices, the lunch packet prices came down. Everything was coming spontaneously, mm -hmm. which nobody expected. There was no decrease of prices. But why is that? They had some confidence. Mm -hmm. Whether we didn't have the confidence is a different thing. But the people, the masses had some confidence that these things will come down. And it happened. And even today, you see, potato prices coming down. 
every day there was something i mean the fuel prices came down buses bought their prices down even today you see the three wheel drivers have bought their prices down so that was a big uh, thing that the people expected at this moment we have a country without a government today we don't have a cabinet we don't have a prime minister i think from since 1948 this is the first time sri lanka is without a government this might be up to tomorrow morning i think i don't know whether uh, it will uh, change or whether the reappointment could take place nobody knows but let's let's wait and see but what i'm trying to say is what is the uh, people wanting people want is that they want to exercise their franchise if you see the two rallies that took place today one in gol in one in mardana you can see what the people's uh, people want to do uh, now miss ali you bring in a very important point you say about uh, selling out uh, state assets uh, let, let's look at uh, the uh, hum on the report that was uh, somewhat sold to the chinese uh, for a 99 year lease and then let's take a look at the eastern terminal as well uh matale you know, airport well, uh, the matale airport the oil tanks uh, so right so all this uh, the minister who was in power was representing uh, the sri lanka freedom party mahinda samar singha was the minister of ports and shipping when the uh, hum on the report was uh, given away and he came directly under the control of president maithri pala sirisena if that's the case why didn't the president stop all this at that time see even the east terminal if you, that same question arises here also when the question of the east terminal also came it when it was brought to cabinet president immediately told them sorry this cannot be given at least leave one for sri lanka mm. you can't sell the whole thing out right now you sell the matale airport you sell all the oil tanks then now see the first instant where did we go wrong first was the port port city right when mr rajapaksa gave it uh, to the chinese the unp government that came promised the national the uh, unity government came and said we will stop this at any cost and they stopped it not knowing what the consequences are going to be they stopped it after one and a half years they had to not only really give back that but they had to give a bigger land that what mr rajapaksa promised so those were the blunders that mr vikramasinghe made so and they don't consult anybody they don't ask for anybody's opinion he decides then the president can asked I, him ask in the question? same cabinet one meter yeah. in the same cabinet president asked him who told you that you are giving this east terminal he said i have promised you can't promise like that that is where all these problems started azad my question to you is you said that uh, prime minister ranil vikram singh a former prime minister ranil vikram singh does not consult anyone my question is directed to you does the president consult anyone before he takes decisions definitely he has to know because as the president he has so many advisers with him he has to consult there is somebody advising him in all these issues that's what i so, told you earlier also right now right now the country does not have a prime a minister government. A, there is no proper prime minister spending for the ministries have completely come to a standstill all this have been now uh, published in the hansard so it's official documents available all this and more puts the country in limbo so who has he consulted to take the to take no, this decision i mean uh, i mean you're wrong there samir mm. when you say there is no money to take forward any projection or up to april next month they have already approved the budget in the cabinet right that is already supplementary budget has been yeah, proposed supplementary budget has yeah, been approved, has been approved. The so still the march april, april spending has come to a standstill no, that is only now no only yeah. tonight from tonight that will start we so don't know tomorrow was morning past, this was now, my question week. my question is okay there is a court order preventing yeah. mr rajapaksa being the prime minister and the cabinet of ministers not function they will be ministers he will be prime minister but no functions right that will happen what happens in my question if the president reappoints them tomorrow where does the court order stands is my question so there is lot of things that can happen tomorrow morning let's wait and see thank you very much uh, ms azad sali khalam municipal councilor uh, also the leader of the national unity alliance um, the political merry ground seems to continue the um, the questions in, is in the air uh, so let's now focus our attention to uh, dr atul siri samarakon uh, department of social studies uh, open university of sri lanka uh, dr samarakon where does it leave parties like the janata vimukti perempuna right now because the jp is one of the parties that have said that they are going to be neutral in all this and more in parliament so where does it leave <coughs> parties like the jvp right now yeah well uh, shamir uh, i would say uh, jvp initially 
uh, told that they would be neutral, but uh, I understand later on they understood the gravity of this issue, the complexity. So therefore, I think they have uh, intervened uh, uh, deter, uh, uh, deter with uh, some determination to uh, force the major parties uh, and to bring them to uh, uh, up and uh, demanding uh, them to uphold the democracy in the country. So JVP's uh, major slogan, uh, I would say, has been uh, to uphold the democracy and not to take sides uh, with any of these parties. So that is very much clear. And uh, I, as a political scientist, I have observed that, uh, and I have heard that many of uh, many many eminent people of this country uh, are, are very much appreciative of what JVP has been doing during the last uh, uh, few weeks as well as last few years. Because JVP as a minor party, I would say it has been doing much. Because with just six members in the parliament, and JVP has done more than what uh, its uh, capacity actually deserves for. Uh, if, if you look at uh, the two major parties, what have they done to this country? So f after 1977, the country has been driven to uh, more or less an authoritarian political structure. And the two parties uh, have taken the advantage of uh, this authoritarianism. So I would say at uh, the, the, the two parties, the UNP and the SLFP uh, and its uh, alliance partners have uh, uh, driven this country to uh, ruins and uh, it has uh, today we have seen the result but the, we can't can, can we really expect the JVP to turn around the country right now because the JVP has only six members as you said they're losing grip very heavily in, at the grassroots uh, as we speak right now uh, they're not taking a political stand at present uh, you don't know whether they're supporting the UNF or they're, they're going to stand neutral because we know that the TNA has come out and uh, said that they're supporting the UNF, but the JP has not made any such announcement at present. So do you think the JP is going to have a political future given the current circumstances in Sri Lanka at, at present? Yeah, I'm, I'm very much I'm sure that JVP is going to be the future of this country, but uh, provided that uh, intellectuals and other civil society elements have to support it because we know the capacity of JVP and uh, the organization power of JVP. Though it, it is a minor part, it, it has a big organizational power. So it, it has but, but, shown but, but, its but, but, power. But, 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 let's go back to the 10th of February, the 2018 elections. The JVP did not perform well at all. They had a whitewash. There was no challenge. There was no formidable force, nothing at the... 10th February elections this year and you are very optimistically saying now they will be a force to reckon with in the future. Yeah, I, I'm very much optimistic it's still because uh, you, you see, I mean, our, electri our electorate is very much traditional, conservative. To change this kind of electorate, you, you need much energy and uh, more convincing uh, slogans. I would say now, with the current developments, people should uh, understand uh, that this country is uh, going to have no future. Now, the UNP has failed and the uh, SLF, SLFP and Maitri Palasi Sen all have failed and they have they have created uh, havocs and they have uh, they have uh, they, they are responsible for what we are, what we are experiencing at the moment. So there if is no there government. If there is a presidential election um, next year on the 8th of January 2019, let's uh, let's uh, hypothetically think that way. Who would the JVP field? Would they support a common candidate, or would they support or field their own candidate at a future election? So I, I can't answer that question exactly, but uh, but uh, going by the uh, work that they are doing uh, at the moment, so they have uh, uh, they are working with several other organizations like National Intellectuals Organization and some youth front. So there are several uh, intellectual and civil society elements which have actually joined uh, force with the JVP. Actually, those elements which supported. Uh, Maitri Pala Sirisena in 2015 January 8 uh, campaign are, are very much with the JVP now. 
I, I would say now the, um, the now majority of the intelligentsia in universities and uh, 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 and other places, and they they understand the necessity of a party like JVP. They they, they have a clear role to play in this country. But uh, but sadly, you know the behavior of media and the uh, behavior of the business uh, uh, sector and the corrupt uh, po politicians in this country. So under all these existing circumstances, the JVP has to make the history. So th it is not under, the cho uh, under their much, uh, choice, but yeah. under the existing circumstances that they have to make the history. I am sure that they will make that history. Thank you very much, Dr. Athalos Siri Samarakon, uh, representing the Department of Social Studies, uh, University, uh, Open University of uh, Sri Lanka. I now move my attention to Aranda Ginige, founder chairman of Social Enterprise Lanka. Um, Aranda, you've been very passionate about educating the future prospects of Sri Lanka, about uh, how the system works, how democracy functions, what sort of actions need to be taken, so on and so forth. Right now, you have Mahindra Rajapaksa coming, uh, a lot of people say coming from the back door <laughs> to become the prime minister of the country. Then you have uh, President Maitri Palsiri Senate taking very, uh, very quick decisions um, on many instances since the 26th of October. And he has uh, very clearly stated that he's not going to appoint Ranil Vikram Singh as the next prime minister, even if the UNP uh, feels a majority in parliament. So given all this, where is democracy lying in the country? Is there democracy at all? Can we expect an election to happen in the future? Even if an election happens, what's going to happen next? First question is very simple. Is there democracy? All these actions, decisions being taken right now promote democracy in this very little Sri Lanka, does it? Uh, thank you, Shamir, and it's, it's great to be back on uh, Face the Nation. See, to answer your question, Shamir, um, first of all, people need to understand what on earth is democracy, right? As a social entrepreneur and also as the ambassador for Democracy Earth who's championing liquid democracy, which is a new concept that is being uh, developed and tested around the world, uh, you know, I go and talk to all kinds of people in the society at all levels, and I ask them, what do you really understand by the word democracy? I, of course, ask in, in Sinhala, Prajatantravade. You know, first of all, the word Prajatantravade is, is too heavy to a lot of people, and, and the answers I get are incomplete answers or flat wrong answers. Hmm. The fact is, ma vast majority of the people of this country do not understand what is democracy, right? Just, you know, let, let me, for the, for, the, for the sake of viewers, let me just make some very, very important points here. See, what I have in my hand is the constitution of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. If I ask a lot of people, what do you understand by the word republic, Jana Raja, they don't really understand it, right? You know, to understand the word republic, you should really think about what is opposite to republic. You know, if you look at Britain, for example, Britain is not a republic. The UK, or, you know, however, however you want to structure the name of it, it's not a republic. It's a monarchy. The sovereignty of the UK or the Britain or the Great Britain is vested and lies with the Queen, Her Majesty the Queen. Even the very government of the United Kingdom is called Her Majesty the Queen's government. The opposite of that is the republic, where the sovereignty, the absolute ownership, the absolute power to control this land and everything in it lies with the people of this country, the citizens of this country. That's, that's why we are a republic. And that has huge, huge meaning. It is very, very important for all of us to really understand what that concept is. Now, what is democracy then? Democracy is the tool that we use to govern this republic, right? And it's, it's essentially a decision-making tool. It, and, and there are various ways you can practice democracy. You can do it direct democracy, how we do uh, in Sri Lanka right now through representative democracy, and in new forms like liquid democracy. So democracy can be practiced in so many ways. So to answer your question, do we have democracy? Of course we do have democracy. We have a democratic structure here. So in the Constitution, it says, the sovereignty of the people shall be exercised and enjoyed in the following manner. The legislative power of the people, the executive power of the people, and mind you, the judicial power of the people. 
You know, a lot of people think that, you know, the parliament is supreme or the executive is supreme, the judiciary is untouchable. But at the end of the day, the source of power, the root source of power for all these institutions is with the people. And therefore, I believe the best way to preserve democracy and to overcome the current crisis is to go for a general election to solve the parliamentary crisis and thereafter all the other elections. Uh Aranda, you bring in this very important point saying that the power in a republic lies with the people. Am I right? Yes, That's absolutely. What you said. Yeah, right. So, who wanted an election? Now, the people appoints a government mm. for a period of five years based on the 19th Amendment of the Constitution. And based on the constitutional powers, they want a government to be in power for five years. So, one man decides uh, on a particular date, this is not going to work. So let's uh, dissolve parliament and go for a general election. So one man, does he represent the entire republic? That's a very good question. So again, as I said, the sovereignty, the sovereign power of the people, Shamir, is divided into three parts. One is the executive power, which is headed by the president. And don't forget that the president, whoever the person may be, the individual may be, it can be Maitri Pala Sirisena, Mahindra Rajapaksa, or Anil Vikramasinghe, or whoever the person may be, the, the position of presidency is elected by all the citizens of the country. It is a direct vote to appoint that person, right? Now, on the, to, on the, on the contrary, when you appoint uh, 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 members of parliament, they uh, run from districts. Right? So uh, when uh, uh, Mr. Anil Vikram Singh is elected to the parliament, he only gets a vote base of the Colombo district. Whereas Maitripala Sirisena had a mandate, a direct mandate, from all the people of this country. Okay, so he got, what, uh, 6.2 million uh, uh, votes. And then some people argue, so then he has to preserve the, uh, the demands of the 6.2 million. No, that is, that is rubbish. When the person is appointed to office, when that person, he or she becomes the president, Shamir, mm. he has the responsibility by the constitution to uphold the constitution for all the people of this country, not to look after the interests of one party or a, or a group of people that helped him to come to power. So, so that kind of answers your... So, so let, let me quickly ask you another question. Do you think uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa accepting the prime ministerial position uh, on the 26th of October um, gave way for him to lose somewhat of his popularity that he gained uh, for some time now, mm. since the 10th of February this year. He had a wonderful pop popularity. It was, um, it was on an upheaval, uh, upheaval trend. You had uh, a lot of uh, people supporting him. But suddenly, on the 26th of October, don't you think that started diminishing somewhat? Actually, for me, it doesn't matter. Right, okay. because I am a I'm an informed citizen, and I invite uh, the viewers to also be informed citizens. That's why you should buy this constitution. It's 400 rupees. You can buy it from the Parliament Bookshop or download free from the Parliament.lk website. I'm an informed citizen. See, for me, democracy is not identity politics. I I don't vote people in. I don't look at the person. Right. I, I use democracy to make a decision. I have, I have my political ideology, and I look at the camp that represents that, and I look at their right. policies, and then I take a decision based on that. I'm an right. informed, and that's how democracy should be. Thank, thank well, you very much, Ananda. Yeah. I'll get back to you um, in a minute or two when we open the floor for questions from our journalists. I now move attention to uh, the very vocal uh, Mr. Gobind Dayashri, a senior attorney at law. Nice to have you back, uh, Mr. Dayashri, on the, on the show. Um, so I, I want to drag your attention to the Court of Appeal decision today. Uh, put somewhat of a full stop, um, isn't it, uh, to the activities of the uh, current Prime Minister and the 48 members who are supporting this particular cause in question. So where does it leave the people at the end of the day? Well, people are left very much in the lurch by all these activities. But let me start at the point I would like to start, that is, how did this all begin? It began when Mr. Sirisena decided as president that he will prorogue parliament. I think that's a way, he's, that's, he's well within his powers to prorogue, and he did it. But remember at that time, there were two questions that he had to answer. He had to find out, in his opinion, who was the most suited person to be the prime minister, who represents the most number of votes or has the gain or the popularity of most number of members of parliament. Now, he didn't do that. 
He didn't do that, nor did he look at the two-third majority which would have enabled him to have an election. Instead, he went and fixed the date for an election. The matter went up before the Supreme Court. They struck him down. They, I think in this whole thing, episode, we are one we set of winners. That's the judiciary. They have performed marvelously. I think they did excellent job. They were spot on. I, I was a counsel myself, but I didn't represent anybody. I was the only counsel who represented myself. And I said clearly, there are three parts in that section, Article 40. Because remember, Shashi, uh, we we remember, my dear friend, that it was really the President and Ranil Vikram Singh who bought Article 17, which deprived the people, disenfranchised the people for four and a half years, four and a half years from voting. It's not four and a half, it's really four, four and eight months because there's an election period and a nomination period. So that they disenfranchised the people. And when that came in the 19th Amendment, I was the person who went to court and challenged it. I said this is, and I said the very re re incident that will take place now will happen if you don't give the people the right to vote. Because if you remember, Daddy Sena Naika, Mrs. Bandar Naika, several people had elections and it's the people who could decide. Now people are disenfranchised, they cannot decide. Even if the government loses a majority, loses a low, vote of no confidence, loses the budget, loses a, a financial bill, they still can remain in parliament because the four and a half year rule is mandatory. I argued very strenuously that people must, the, Yahapa, the government cannot have a Yahapalanya stunt like this where people are deprived of the vote. And what did, I, I remember I spoke about this to yeah, yeah, Mr. Herat, the JVB member the other day, and he also agreed with me on that point that you have to have elections. Now, what did the court do? What did Siopa, the CJ do? He did not give an answer. He neither said yes nor no. He is bound when a submission is made to consider the submission, give his reasons. If he accepts it, I would have been very happy. If he rejected, I would have been equally happy because I knew where I was wrong. He said he couldn't find any mistake or I don't know why. I cannot keep into his mind, but he didn't have any answer. So that the government was able to get through that legislation without a referendum. The point one. Point two, it is incumbent that once you have a, according to the constitution, once the constitution is passed, and it was passed overwhelmingly. Remember the, J, J, the J.O., pardon? Except one person. Entirety of the J, J, Joint Opposition of Mahindra Rajapaksa oh. voted for it or did not <laughs> refrain from or attend. I think Mahindra Rajapaksa was not present. But why is that? Why didn't they oppose? So they can't. So when Mahindra Rajapaksa later thought of contesting for the third time, the presidency knew. I told him that you can't do it. I wrote an article and said you can't because you mm. didn't oppose. I, so I oppose. So anyway, now the situation. So but, but where does it? Where does all this leave now? Now you it, have le it leaves in uh, now. Now the courts have clearly said Mahindra Rajapaksa is no longer the prime minister. So that means all the accidents is incorrect. He's not a proper holder. He's a hoax. Is a fiction in office. So based so, on what based on what Azad said right now, the president can reappoint. No, he can't. How can he reappoint? I mean, that he'll be cont that'll be contempt. He dare not reappoint. He will not reappoint. I'll tell you what the president will do. He'll do something very, very intelligent and br beat everybody at it. He will have a presidential election and he will be the only available candidate for Mahindra Rajapaksa. <laughs> because I'll tell you, Gotabia is disqualified. Mahindra Rajapaksa's candidate will be Sirisena, and that is the French. So let's candidate. say, so let's now, say there now, was, I mean, a, let's say there was an election on the 8th of January 2019. Because that's the only. What election. are the chances that President Sirisena is going to have for another re-election? I don't know. That depends on the SLP, but I can tell you, I quite agree with you. Mahindra Rajapaksa has lost. I mean, I've been in several outstations after he lost. And after he took over the premiership, premiership and they knew, all, all the people knew that he was, it was only a matter of time he was going to lose it. Because they know, I mean, don't think Sri Lankans are little dumb bums. They so know you, what so is you, happening. So, so you don't agree with what, when Eranda says he goes around asking people what democracy or what Pajatantravadi is. I don't know. He's people a, he's don't a, want to uh, really know what democracy well, is all he's about. A they just want to he's know an informed democrat. How, how, to, how, how to move forward. I think he's an informed democrat. He may know he's still more than <laughs> anyone else. Because I'm not an informed democrat, I'm just a person who knows what is going on, happening at the moment. But uh, the strategy is this.
Mm. My strategy is that today, Sri Lanka, we have had a situation where we were economically in a absolutely whole. Now we made it worse. Now that is what I think Ranil Vikramasinghe and Mahindra Rajapaksha should both be blamed. I think it would be wonderful if we have a new candidate from the SLFP and the UNP running for the presidency. It will have to be because Mahindra can't run. He thought he could, but he can't. So we'll have a new candidate from the SLFP, a new candidate from the UNP, maybe Premadas. Now Premadas is a reluctant candidate, but I must say that he's uttering the right things at the right moment right now because he's not he's back in Ranil Vikram Singh, but he's holding himself forward. He's hoping he's holding himself forward as a candidate. I don't know what Thank you very much. So, so we'll get back to uh, the four of you um, in a second or so. Let me quickly introduce uh, the journalist. On to my immediate left is attorney at law, Sonali Vanikabadge. On my far left is uh, Nabi Majid. Let's start off with Sonali. Thank you very much, Shamir. Uh, Mr. Gomin Dayasri, thank you so much for being on the show. It's thank fantastic you. having you uh, for a really long time. Thank you. Um, now, I happened to be at the Court of Appeal when the order was delivered early this afternoon. And um, now we are told that this will go up in appeal uh, to the Supreme Court. Um, however, as things stand now, there's a part of the judgment which I'd like to read out to you uh, in order to get your uh, opinion uh, on me, this. I think the order was from the Supreme Court or was it the Court, court of, of Appeal? Court of appeal. Court from the Court of Appeal. Right. Um, it says here, the court observes that what the petitioners have requested this court to restrain is not the functioning of the Prime Minister or the Cabinet of Ministers or any other minister, but to restrain the respondents from functioning in those offices. Thus, the court observes that the interim orders prayed for are directed against the individual respondents to restrain them from functioning in the relevant public offices. The question as to who should be appointed to function in the said offices if the court restrains the respondents from functioning in the relevant offices is not a matter for this court but for those who are vested with such powers in terms of the constitution so my question to you is uh, in your opinion what are the implications and lessons that we can draw from this yes the first thing I, first thing that draws my attention is the fact that UNP was far too late in bringing this much of this problem could have been resolved if this was brought in right at the time mind the Rajapaksa was appointed because he has done so much damage, he has used so much of money, wealth and uh, office to further his political activity and those, remember there are people like Vij v uh, Vimal, v v Vimal v Viravansa who is accused of housing frauds, appointed to the Ministry of Housing, so such people, that's a grave mis remiss on the part of Mahindra Rajapaksa. But I must tell you, Mahindra Rajapaksa is a peculiar gentleman. I was his lawyer for a long, long time. That the time that, if you remember the time we won the P. Toms, the, the demerger, the, uh, then the bringing down the power, he's a person who listens to his lawyers. You are, because right. I remember a foursome, H.L.D. Silva, E.D. Vikramanayaka and S.L. Gunasekhar, they are no longer in this world. Mm -hmm. But they appeared in those cases and we have fought for the JVP, some of those cases. Because Mahindra Rajapaksa was too scared to put his foot into those, some of those matters. He directed me to Vimal Veeravansa and we did those cases thereafter. But what I say, what the important point I want to make is, Remember, Mahinda Rajapaksa listens to lawyers. He knows law. He's a very intelligent man. Somebody is misleading him. Somebody is misguiding him. In our time, when, as lawyers, we used to tell my this is what has to be done, and he did it. That is just what Mrs. Bandar Naika did. But I don't know. Strange things are happening. I, yesterday, I heard him make a disclosure of the law, which is totally irrelevant and made a lot of meaningless exercise, because much of it was utter muck. Somebody has sold her ideas. I don't know who does it. I'm sure not my friend over there, but I'm <laughs> sure it's... I don't think he's a GLPD. He knows law somewhat. I don't think he's a clever man, but he knows something more. But I don't know who it must... I do, I, because I'm very sorry for him. Because uh, he Mr. had Dasri, a tremendous following in the country. He's lost it. What are the lessons that the executive arm of government can take from this? Yes, executive arm must learn from this. I think the courts have triumphed at the end. It's the constitution is the highest body of law in the country. 
everybody is beneath the law, even the chief, just the president, the prime minister, they are beneath the law. They must least look at the constitution and act accordingly. It's a good lesson. I think, I mean, I'm one who opposed the 19th Amendment, but I believe I have to follow the 19th Amendment. I, I believe sure. in it now. Not that mm. I accept it in any way, because democracy is very much rattled by the Clause 70. But you have to accept it, you have to work within the framework. Now, this is a good lesson from Sirisena, who thinks through thought. He could do anything and get away with it. He did that once. Remember, he got away with the appointment of Ranil Vikram Singh over Jayaratna. He thought he can do it all the time. That's the lesson he should have learned at that time if Jayaratna went to court. Mind the uh, season would have been serious. In your trouble. opinion, is there a political vacuum now? I mean, following this this order, what should be the way forward technically? Technically, uh, uh, there is a disorder at the moment because there's only one living being. There is no. There is only a president, and the president is now empowered to do anything. He has no check. There's no parliament. Parliament is dissolved. There's a speaker who's. Uh, who, who, the, who, who decides things on hearing. I mean, that's stupid of him to think that he can decide a question on merely on the basis of a, a loud noise that was made by one side instead of the other. That's stupidity. You have to, when you have a physical count, you must have a physical count or an electronic count. That was not done. That is the cause of much of these problems. There again, I would say, at, as at the, the present day, we have only a president, and thank God we have a president because president as powers and those powers must not be reduced in any way because remember we beat terrorism because of Mahindra Rajabaks and Mahindra Rajabaks used executive power. That is very important and today we would not have been in this state if not for Mahindra Rajabaks. Though I have, I have deep criticisms against him on the present matter, I respect him for what he did to eliminate terrorism for this country. But that is not all. That is a, there has to be a full stop on that issue also. Uh, thank yes. you very much, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gomindasri. Uh, Dr. Afula, why do you suppose the JVP is not doing very much to um, curb the damage that is uh, being done unto the country? The JVP can actually have the opportunity to present itself as as a vikalpe or as an alternative to this current um, jackassery politically that is taking place. However, it chooses to just sit back and watch what happens. Why is that? Uh, I, don't, I don't think that JP has chosen to sit back and uh, uh, wait uh, until others are doing the things. But uh, it has been more cautious uh, about the events, developments, because JVP is a party which has been uh, 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 actually, which has been uh, eliminated uh, from the political scenes twice, right? So it has experienced the violence of uh, uh, this political structure very much. So it, 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 it normally, naturally, it should be cautious of these events because these two parties are not at all democratic. So if, if you observe the developments uh, after 1977, so how many youth have been killed in this country? Uh, it's all by these two parties, SLFP and the UNP. So JVP has been the victim of this political violence so throughout. So right now, after 1990, How so? How so? In 1989, what happened? Yeah, 1990. Why, why are you forgetting that aspect yeah, of 18, the Yeah, 1889 is Very a different, conveniently different episode. Them. So 1889, yeah. the, the, according to JVP's point of view, there, there, there was... Uh, uh, external intervention, right? So JVP was uh, so very JVP much, was very uh, blind towards that, very or? much uh, vehemently opposing that external intervention, <coughs> and uh, it has to organize. Uh, uh, it, uh, it was not. Dr. Samarkhan, even the JVP leader Anurag Desamay has since apologized for the actions, actions of the JVP of the absolutely. past. Absolutely, he ah. has apologized, Dr. Uh, Mr. Ms. Anurag Desamay, the yes. leader of the JVP, has apologized for the actions committed by he the JVP apologized. in the past. He has, so he has. Yeah, we have it in on, on record well, as well. Well, well I think yeah. that, that, I mean, the JVP has to look uh, re uh, reflectively, I mean, 
on what happened uh, in 71 and 89, of course. But currently, its conduct is very much democratic. It has been the only party which has not used violence, actually. So if you, if you look at all the other parties, uh, all the other politicians, <coughs> though, they depend very much on underworld and violence. So their, their entire political power is made of violence. If, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, if Mr. Dayasiri proposes that uh, it is the executive power which uh, won the war or uh, something like that, I, I wouldn't say that. It, it, it is not, not exactly the executive power or something. Uh, but you can't deny that the political leadership that was given by the executive contributed yeah, the political to the leadership is, was course. collective, actually. It, it is and not just the not, not that just leadership, the executive. That collective leadership right? came it, from it the is, executive it is, branch it is of the legislative le legislature plus, plus the executive right so it, it is how the countries are run not but not only by the executives right so therefore it was a collective effort JVP was there all other parties were there so it, it was all all party effort which won the war actually so if, if we if we ever agree that it is a victory I don't say that was a victory at all because but just by any eliminating the LTT or killing thousands of Tamil people we have not got any victory in this country so we we, we have do those our people no, 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 no civilized country in the world kill their own people not America does that, right? No, no other countries do that. So, okay, what do you mean? America is what doing elsewhere. Not, 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 not America is. Uh, I would say people. America is. This is uh, America is doing that today. elsewhere uh, on, on other exact. territories. Not, how dare you, you say this? How dare you say this, Doctor? How dare you say this? Seventy-one. So listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Right? America is not doing that to their own people. No right to say that. It may be fighting wars in other other territories. No right to say that. It is not killing its own people. I have so no right to say that. Uh, Americans are killed before, 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 before the polls. Goodness. What yeah. are you talking? The first fellow who went to polls were killed. Can I ask you one question? Is not the, SLF, the JVP that got the highest number of votes, per, first, second, third in most districts in the election that Chandrika won? Uh, yes, that now, is, if that is so, if that is so, why is it that the, the UN JVP got such a big vote and what have they done? They did nothing more. And, and lost they, they lost, they got decimated of that. So I think JVP is a write-off. It's an incompetent party. Right. You know, they, yeah, let me, I, let me I, just I, say if, one, one thing. If this JVP is, this is, is an incompetent party, so right now, I mean, all the parties have shown their incompetency because there yeah. is no government so is in JVP. this country. So, uh, so I just want, so I just want to place it on record. The uh, uh, constitution, uh, I think, ha I mean, has now... No, no, Dr. Salman, I just have yeah. to, before we further yes. move, I just want yeah. to uh, tell our viewers, uh, the views that you're expressing right now are of the individual's concern or the parties that, that they represent. Uh, we as a network or an organization uh, uh, won't take any responsibility yeah. for the statements yeah. that you make. Uh, we have a question for um, Azad Sali, a leader of the National Unity Alliance. Uh, the question is directed from Shamindra Ferdinando uh, from the island. He says that you speak about uh, the power lying with the people, and that is why it's important for us to move towards uh, an election right now and for the people to exercise their franchise. If the power lies with the people, how does defeated parliamentarians accommodate in parliament through the national list? Yes, um, um, that is not uh, anything to do with my party, but it is the president's party. Mm. What happened was, when the UPFA contested together, at that time itself, there was division in the party. Mm. A set was with Mahindra Rajapaksa, a set was with President Sirisena. Mm. And they openly campaigned, saying not to vote for those candidates who are contesting under Maitripala Sirisena. So that is why when he got the total of uh, seats, he had to accommodate all those people who lost. So just because, just because uh, there are divisions within a, within a political party, and when the people rejected these individuals in question, how can they come into parliament through so the national is, list. Th that is the democracy we are having today. Because we, we saw this with you, uh, the UNP as well. We saw, well, saw Sarat Fonseca getting, how many, how yeah. many votes did he get? Where is he now? Where is his party? Why did the UNP take him? Right, they took him. Mr. Keeping Sal, all the other people the on the national, national list. list. You were on the UNP's national yes, list. Yes, I, I, I was also on the national list and I was the only person who had a letter from the party that you will be nominated first. Right? So these things happen. Even now they are talking that they will <laughs> again accommodate me, which I have said no. First rectify the mistake you have made already.
Well, what so this happens, uh, Samir. Yeah, but what's so the now see that the same people, hmm. as you mentioned, who came, are the people who first broke and went, the 16th, Dasya Kaliye, right? So that created more problem for everybody, and today that is the result. That is the result that has come out today, and today the whole country is suffering due to that. This is what we have to understand. If not, Mahindra Rajapaksa will be where he is. The UPFA will be where it is. After one year or one year and two months, we will go for election because after four and a half years that you can dissolve. But first and foremost, this good governance government failed to prepare the constitution properly. You know? That's the biggest mistake they made. You know? Mr. Sumendran was put in charge. He deals in English only. He deals in parliament in English. He deals in the constitution also in English. So he forgot the single language. That is why the constitution is saying one thing in Sinhala, one thing in English. Right? And that That's is why your all this is. And ultimately, what does the constitution itself say? If there is a crisis, that you have to go by the Sinhala version. Mr. Sali, uh, the, the, what you just articulated, that there is a difference between what is said in English and what is said in Sinhala, that is your opinion. That is not something that has been upheld by uh, the Supreme Court, that no. specific difference. See, that is what the Prime Minister was, told, the former Prime Minister was saying. I spoke with the English constitution to the foreigners and to the ambassadors, and the same ambassador uh, summoned to the President's office. President said, I spoke to them in the Singhala constitution. So this was openly seen by everybody, you know. Around nobody, the... nobody has up to, said, up to now said that was right or wrong, but it was accepted. Uh, well, it's only the Supreme Court at the end of the day that can say whether something is That is what, everyone should have waited for the Whether it's constitutional or not, or whether, being in a hurry, whether there is so a difference, see, it's the um, Supreme Court so that see, can say it. What Otherwise, happens is, what you and I say no, is simply an opinion. Now they are talking about independent judiciary, right? Earlier, you remember, before this matter went before the Supreme Court, you saw all the medias, you saw especially the social media going. President just appointed the CJ two months ago. So this is going like this. Already Ranjan Ramanayaka has given the judgment, 3 into 2, right? This was the talk of the town. And today, once the Supreme Court says, we have, we have stayed the gasset, my God, independent judiciary. Now everybody is very happy. Same thing with the Court of Appeal, right? They said the seventh man was brought to the first position. Huh? President Sirisena did this. Huh? He is the man who was uh, sitting in his commission. All that was said. But now... When the order is given, my God, the independence of the judiciary but, must see all that? the heroes coming in front of the mics and talking. But so other, other, the other same thing happens. As long as it's yeah. good for them, suits them, they'll be happy. So what I'm saying, Sri Lanka must have an independent judiciary but, and we are for an independent judiciary. Hmm. Let that continue, not take sides. And it will not take sides, I know. No, but we saw the same thing, thing happening. Yes. Let me, what is the best test? Isn't it the order? Isn't it the judgment? Exactly. So if that is so, if you say judgment is good, they are accepting that the Supreme Court. No, no, Court. but I'm trying to say the Sri Lankan's attitude, no, no. before the judgment, they predict one thing. Yeah. And once the judgment comes, they say independent judiciary. If the judgment goes the other way, they will curse the judiciary. But Azar, we saw this happening with uh, Johnston Fernando as well. Just ah, before what I'm saying. it happened, he, uh, he said the, Indian, the judiciary is not no, independent. No, President Mahindra Rajapaksa about a month ago said, yeah. we don't have any faith in the judiciary. So, he yes. said that openly. So, and now... Now does he he, say, he, he, I, are we trying to say that what he said is right? No. So we have a question from uh, a viewer who wants to, who wish to uh, stay anonymous. So this question is to Aranda. Um, Aranda, uh, there are, it, it's a, it's a two, um, uh, it's a two-prong question. First is, um, uh, does sovereignty rest with the people? Yes. You are absolutely sure about well, it. I mean, <laughs> the constitution <laughs> says so. The 400 rupee <laughs> book that you brought from the parliament you, okay, library okay. says that the sovereignty lies with the people. Oh, no, just no, say yes or no question. Open Article question. Yes or no. Well, I, let, me, let me read it out. Yeah, okay. So very in quickly. In the Republic yeah, of Sri Lanka, sovereignty is in the people and is alienable, inalienable. Right. Right. So, so do, you, do you also agree with the fact that if sovereignty rests in the people, it should be exercised via parliament? Isn't it? Uh, not necessarily. See, well, this why is, is that? Where, yeah, right. Yeah. So let me yeah. answer. Yeah. That's a very good question. That is the confusion that a lot of people have. Because in some countries, democracy is structured in a way that the parliament, uh, it's, it's a parliamentary democracy, right? But in Sri Lanka, whether you like it or not, uh, actually, it was the case in 1972 constitution, which was brought, uh, it was the, the, the Republic constitution brought by Mrs. Sirimao Bandaranaika. And while I mentioned uh, the, uh, the name uh, Sirimao Bandaranaika, let me also say that. 
uh, I think uh, doctor with all due respect you should take back that accusation. It was JVP that was the very first terrorist organization in this country that, uh, that took the government control areas by force using weapons and attacking police people in 1971. It was so bad that M Madam Sirima Bandar Naik had to bring in uh, Indian army to take back the power. Imagine if this happened today, I mean with Facebook and everything, <laughs> this would have been something like ISIS taking the uh, control uh, in Syria, right? Yeah. So it's a, it was a great, they are the ones who taught terrorism yeah, no, but, but to you, Sri Lanka. You, uh, but but you, you're saying about ISIS taking over Syria, that's a very, that's not, a, that can't be a comparison. That, that to, is, I'm you know, telling you that is, right? That is my opinion, right? That yeah, is. Pa part it, of it, not, you can't say Syria yeah, that, that, was taken, that's but like part, a, of, that's part, a very, some, some some parts taken. of Syria. That's a radical yeah. statement. Yeah. parts of Syria, didn't ISIS, take uh, control of the government held areas and that Syrian government had to fight some and area, take back some, some, area, some areas, area, not yeah. all, yeah. some yeah. areas, that's what I said, right? Similarly, JVP took control of a lot of uh, southern uh, government uh, held areas and Mrs. Bandar Naik had to bring in Indian force. Imagine how it difficult it would have been to bring in a foreign force to take back the government control, like how Syria had to depend on uh, Russia, for example. So it was a it was an extremely grave uh, terrorist act that uh, JVP did. They don't have any right to accuse the gov government forces of killing innocent people. No, no, but let me answer. Let me answer the question. Yeah, yeah, let yeah, me yeah. answer the question, please. Let me answer the question. So the, the second part of uh, what was the second part of question, Shamir? Uh, about uh, Salman lying uh, with the people, and if that's the case, Salman should be excised by a parliament. By the parliament. So in some countries. The, uh, the sovereignty is, uh, is exercised by parliament. But in Sri Lanka, it is different because in 1978 constitution, which was uh, 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 brought forward by uh, late Mr. Jaya uh, the the people's sovereignty is separated into three sections, three parts, which is the executive, the, uh, uh, the legislature, and the judiciary. So here, the parliament is not uh, the, the supreme authority to uh, uh, practice people's sovereignty. There is equal uh, sovereignty uh, given to the executive. And mind you, in the constitution, now there is a misconception among our people that the parliament is supreme because they go by this Westminster system in the UK saying that parliament is even in the, in the Westminster also it's not supreme. But here I, I will tell you the, 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 uh, the opening statement, uh, the, the enactment of uh, the constitution. Let me read that. Uh, it has long text and finally it says do hereby adopt and enact this constitution as the supreme law of the democratic socialist yeah. republic of Sri Lanka. So the constitution is what is supreme. It is not the parliament that is supreme. I mean come on, for, for, this is ridiculous. If we say the parliament is supreme and uh, parliament uh, should uh, practice people's sovereignty uh, altogether, then what about all the accusations of people crossing over? Huh? Aren't people jumping from one side to the other? Huh? Aren't, uh, uh, don't we hear that, uh, that, uh, that these MPs are taking money uh, to uh, cross over? So, uh, what about all of that? And what about the fact that, as, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Gomin said, that uh, uh, a lot of these people actually voted this highly, highly uh, 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 confusing and uh, un uh, uh, unconstitutional around, around 19th Amendments? Around the, I'm, I'm a little confused now. Now, you correctly said Sovereignty is vested in the people. That's Article 3 of the Constitution, no question yeah, I mean, about it. You correctly said yeah, that the three disturb. arms of government yeah, well, are, equally, are equally exercise the different sovereign powers of the people and that the Constitution is the supreme law of the country. Having said all of that, do you still stand by the President's decision of the 26th of October? Isn't that an unconstitutional decision that he made? Okay. Isn't that executive overreach into prerogatives of, uh, into, into the legislature? Well, I mean, now, the, now this, part, so th there are two, two sides. One is the October 26th, 26th decision when the, uh, the SLFP left the national government and then the, uh, uh, the, the knock-on effect that it had. UPFA. Sorry, UPFA le leaving the national government and the knock-on effect it had and how the new prime minister was appointed, which is now being... Um, challenged. The judge challenged uh, at the appeals court. Therefore, uh, I think I should not, uh, you know, give my opinion on that. And while we are on the subject, uh, Mr. Gomin, let me, very, with all due respect, let me correct you. The, the court has not decided. Yeah. Right? The court has only, this is very important for the viewers to understand. The court has not decided anything. No, the so Supreme Court. Co the, it was co just, exactly. It has just given an interim order to, uh, to, to go for a decision. Right? 
So therefore, it is not decided yet and it might come on either way, that is a different matter. Uh, uh, so uh, coming back to your, uh, what was your Isn't question? it executive overreach into the legislature? Right. So see, the you, way you, that the, see, now for, for the, for the. Just, just a minute. The co warranto and the matters were considered by court and an interim order was given, which is, I think, a great uh, here a victory for the courts because how much uh, did you have a situation where courts intervened? If you remember, two, no, it happened twice. It happened twice and when this parliament knocked down, Anura Bandar Naika made a declaration, declaration. in court. Parliament, uh, is supreme. Par parliament is supreme and so did Chamal Rajapaksa do that. Yeah. So that, that is there and my friend is wrong. On another count, the question of sovereignty and inalienability was, uh, and that it can't be inalienable, was the words of Colmindar de Silva hmm. when he introduced the 1972 constitution with H.L. Hmm. de Silva. And also at that time, as at all times, Sri Lanka had an executive judiciary and a uh, legislature, those uh, separate entities in the, in the sure. several, uh, sure. several chapters. So, of the, uh, rather, so you're agreeing say, with uh, uh, Mr. Dashu on that, right? Yeah, I didn't say I didn't say there was there, it, it was not so. I said there was no executive pre uh, presidency in the 1972 constitution. No, you, you're, you're trying to correct uh, Mr. Dashu, saying that he said that uh, addition was not made and that he it, the, the answer was in response no, to that what question. No, he, he that. said that the, yeah. the court gave a decision. Yes, it that, gave. Uh, that uh, the my, my, that uh, the current prime minister and the cabinet uh, 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 appointment of the prime minister and the cabinet is is wrong. Right. Um, that was uh, not the decision that was well, given. No, I, I, that's I, a decision I, I, I a, whether you yes. like it or not. That's an interesting decision that was given after a hearing where I participated and several other lawyers participated, both sides were heard, and an order was given, and that is a heroic answer. So, uh, Aran, I need to give an opportunity to, um, to Dr. Samarakon as well, Dr. Samarakon to respond to uh, the accusation that you yeah, that leveled against. Uh, no, I would give an opportunity for you to respond to that. But, uh, Dr. Atula, uh, Aran brings in a very valid point. He says uh, this terrorism. Uh, that started in Sri Lanka was uh, initially initiated by uh, the JVP in 1971. Yeah, yeah, and we I saw know. that happening in 1989 as well. And you cannot um, in any way say it did not happen because uh, we had individuals like Rohan and Vijay Veda actively involved in this whole process. And if you really re visit the past, um, it's everywhere. Uh, everywhere. It says it bears the hallmarks of the JVP, the Janata Vimukti Paramuna. So, what is your response to Aranda on that? Yeah, well, I accept. Uh, I mean, we we can actually, under no circumstances, uh, accept the political violence. Uh, that is my stance. But uh, terrorism, as a term, uh, it has multiple meanings. So uh, it can be uh, terrorism uh, of uh, various groups. Also, it can be terrorism uh, by the state. So there are, there are two sides of this: state terrorism uh, versus uh, terrorism by various groups like LTT, etc. So what happened in this country, unfortunately, the youth of this country were frustrated uh, uh, about uh, of the political system. So right now, I think, again, people are um, uh, being, fr um, uh, being uh, frustrated because these two parties have not delivered uh, uh, their promises and they, the country is in chaos. So under these circumstances... But, but, but right now what we need is not violence. It's a democratic yeah, framework I think, I think that, 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 that is exactly the part the JVP is taking right now. The JVP has been so moderate and so... Uh, observing these situations and it has been uh, mobilizing people democratically, not violently. So JVP has been very cautious. I there, has not, there, there has not been any violence, uh, there ha uh, there Dr. Has for <coughs> in Sri Lanka at present. Uh, no I, party, I, I think what, neither party. Me, uh, Sham, yeah. what he means is, uh, yeah. Shamil, he means that there's terrorism by terrorism, terrorist and state terrorism. Yeah. Now, I think in general law, state terrorism is not something you can tolerate. You can tolerate terrorism and defeat it, but state terrorism has no place whatsoever in the known law. That is what he is saying. But I also remember this. Please, I there think he should... To mind the as defeat. But let, state me, terrorism. Let, let, let me tell you one further point. I think what the, J, the mistake JPP made was in talking about state terrorism, they, did ter they took over terrorism and did it to the utmost. So that is why people have rejected the JVP as a party dealing right, with we, terrorism and you're quite right. We, we, we need to go in for a short commercial break, but very quickly I want to pose a question to um, Azad. Uh, with regard to a recent statement made by uh, President Maitri Palisades, and this was all over Twitter uh, and also social media, so it's only right for me to pose this question from you because 
uh, you are very uh, you are hand in glove with uh, President Sirisena at present. Um, so l looking at the recent <coughs> statement that was made by President Sirisena uh, when he met a group of uh, um, foreign correspondents, he, when he was posed a question about uh, being six feet underground if he uh, lost the elections, uh, President Sirisena had said um, that was only a remark that he made. Um, in a political stage, and <coughs> hence it cannot be taken seriously. So statements of this nature that has cropped up over the recent past, uh, what sort of uh, negative impact or impression does it create on uh, the pre answer to on that, President Sirisena? You don't have any permanent enemies or permanent friends in politics. This is what I can say, because I don't, uh, I don't uh, agree with that, because that was our campaign. The Rajapaksa regime, the atrocities caused by them, were the reason for the uh, new good governance government to come. But in turn, Samir, we too did not fulfill the aspiration of the people. I, I want to pose a very right. quick question to you now. You said there is no uh, long-term political friends or long-term enemies in politics. If you were told, uh, now you are an individual who was battered by uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksa, you were in jail, you were uh, t not tortured, but you were not even given access to your family members, and it was the media and the international <coughs> community that played a pivotal role to secure our release. So if you were told to support um, President uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa, the current prime minister, uh, would you do it? That is why I very clearly state in my press conference, and even now I say, we need a government without Rani and Mahinda well, both. Thank you very much. So <laughs> I, I leave it at that. Thank you very much, um, Azad Sali, leader of the National Unity Alliance, uh, for speaking your mind. Uh, we're now going for a short commercial break. When we come back, it's, a face, it's face the nation. Uh, where are we really heading as a nation? The political miracle round? Certainly, it seems. <laughs> All this and more after short commercial break. Stay connected, stay with face the nation. political merry-go-round, where are we standing in the circus? So to discuss uh, all this and more, we've invited four guests to the studios, uh, Dr. Atul Siris Somarakon, uh, Mr. Azad Sali, Eran Daginigi, as well as Mr. Gomin Dayashri. So let's start off uh, the third round with um, Eran Daginigi, founder chairman of Social Enterprise Lanka. Uh, Eran, if you are to support someone in this political game, in this circus, uh, if I may say, um, who would you <laughs> side with? <laughs> well, see, now I don't want any, any diplomatic answers here well, because see, see. You, have, you have Sri Lanka <laughs> on your heart uh, as a badge. So I'm thinking that you'll very candidly and honestly uh, respond to this question. So if you are to side a political party, because now I need to find out uh, where you stand mm. in this equation. So if you are to side with any political party in this circus or in this political equation, very modestly, if I put it, where do you stand? See, that is a that is actually a very wrong question to ask in a democracy, Shami. I have to say, mm. because if you know, with all due respect to you guys, you you guys are amazing. You know, my friends, I like you, I love you. But <laughs> see, the thing is, the all these mm. discussions always revolved around either parties, political parties, or individuals. Why is it that? We, this is what we have been doing for ages. It is not democracy, Shamir. It is partycracy. It is not uh, democracy. It is identity politics, what we are doing in this country. That is, democracy is a decision-making tool. That's what I said, right? Now, okay, I'll try to give you an answer, right? I know, I know you are dying to... Uh, <laughs> I know, will uh, rephrase uh, my question for the where question I stand, you, right? in a way <laughs> that you would be compelled to answer, and you know that, so yeah. No, no, I, I mean, <laughs> let, let, me answer it. I'll let me answer it, right? See, the way I see it, there are two clear political camps uh, in this country. Now, there, there are three uh, clear political camps right now in Sri Lanka at present. I what is the third? Okay. Let, let me tell the, th the two that I see and right. then you tell me the third. Right. One. I, I okay? will tell you, yes. Okay. So the, the, the first one is the one that is sort of uh, uh, in, uh, inclining towards the left, you know, the socialist, uh, more, uh, more uh, promoting more indigenous uh, 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 business and uh, agriculture, and then more inclined towards in, in, in terms of foreign relations towards the east. And there's another camp that is more more towards capitalism, uh, more inclined towards uh, privatization, globalization, uh, 
uh, and sort of uh, aligning themselves with the West. These are the two camps that I see. Mm. There is a there is a third camp that I see. That is okay. the separatism camp. Um. What is your camp? What is the third camp that you? No. Play? So so I I will tell you as political parties. You speak about the one. This that is not parties. No no no. But I, I agree with you. But let's let's put it into uh, simple balls mm. and nuts so people at home can uh, really understand what we're okay, talking about. Me. You're talking about an indigenous uh, p political party who is promoting agriculture, who is uh, inclined towards. The West, the only party that I can think of in this political whole scenario is the Sri Lanka for Jana Peramuna. Uh, so oh, you're talking well, about. I would, I would, I would also put. I would also put to yeah. that camp. Yeah. Uh, you know, SLFP and all the leftist parties. You know, all, all um, that camp. That all, that camp. Okay, in Sri that Lanka side. for Jana Peramuna and Sri yeah. Lanka Freedom Party. Yeah. And then you speak about a capitalist party who wants privatization. That's more like the United National Party. Yeah. And present. JVP. So, uh, <laughs> you couldn't say so, but anyway, that's your opinion. <laughs> Uh, and you're entitled for, for your opinion um, yeah. around the, on this very show because you love us and we need to give you your opinion. And what is the third, 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 <laughs> what is the third one? So then, we have, then you have the Tamil National Alliance yeah. and also uh, smaller political parties like the EPDP as well. And then you have the Ceylon Workers Congress who are very much inclined. So there's a lot of political camps at present as you speak right now. But I'm, uh, I'm quite surprised only you see two political camps in this whole scenario. However, so given the fact, which party or which side do you support? Is it the indigenous? Uh, prone uh, agriculture promotion, uh, the most, the more Russia-China uh, relation-based uh, uh, political parties like the Sri Lanka Pojana Peramuna and also uh, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, or is it uh, <laughs> the other side? Very tricky, very, <laughs> very tricky, uh, Jean. I, I, you're very smart like that. See, no, no, but but but, uh, but yeah, very, very no, I will let's, say, let's I, will, I will very clearly say, yeah. I mean, mm. I'm I'm open about this. I've spoken yeah. about this. Mm. I stand more towards left, right? Okay. However, we should not put people in baskets. You know, just because you are inclined more towards one, one side, be, that is your political ideology, then that is a freedom that is given by the Constitution, and right. you, are, you, you, you have a freedom to have that Absolutely. political ideology. Absolutely. But that does not mean that you are supporting any specific party. The decision to support a party in, the, in, in an election will depend on the, the manifesto, the, uh, the policies that particular party would put in front of me, and then I will compare these policies and I will take an informed decision. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Aranda, for your thoughts. I now move attention to um, Mr. Gomin Dashri, senior attorney at law. Ms. Dashri, now we have political camps at present. We have the UNP, we have the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, we have the Sri Lanka uh, Poljana Peramuna, then we have uh, the Janata Vimukti Peramuna, the Tamil National Alliance, the Ceylon Workers Congress, the Ceylon Muslim Congress, the All Ceylon Muslim Congress, so on and so forth. We have a lot of plenty of political parties. But right now, the thinking is to have someone who can take Sri Lanka to the next level. So which party that person comes from doesn't really matter, but his policies and, as Elanda said, his manifesto. Well, let's I, say, yes. l let's say, Mr. Dashri, that there is a general election that's going to come our way um, in a few months from now. Let's say there is a presidential election that's going to come our way in a few years at least from now. What must the people do? Well, I think it's very clear now, after what was seen on television sets over the last two weeks, that we must get rid of the present set of politicians, mm. all of them. Mm. Whether it is SLFP, UNP, thank you for the little applause. <laughs> I take it with a bow. From Miranda, by the way. Yes, by the Miranda. <laughs> No, that's very good. I like Aranda. I mean, I, I was going to help him out in several things. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I think I, I like Ms. Ashri, don't be surprised if Aranda says that he dislikes us and he likes you now, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Aranda, I know. I like not everybody. No, no, no. I don't like people who like everybody. That's uh, that, those are the real <laughs> humbugs. It's very difficult to please. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I, I, I like, I like uh, Asad and uh, my friend who is JVP. Yeah. Right. No, let's, like let's, let's forget about it. I don't like uh, to go into personal matters. Yeah. Okay. Mm. My view is that mm. we must get it. And I think, look at this. Can anybody vote for what they saw in Parliament that day? If you can, if, I think there's a, a, a glimmer of hope in this whole episode. That is, people are now saying, let's get rid of Mahindra Rajbaksa. Let's get rid of Ranil Vikram Singh. Let's get rid of X, Y, and he said. Let's get rid of those 18 fellows who are jumping. There's a guy called Senanayaka who's every day in a different political party. It's Basanta Senanayaka. <laughs> then let, let's, why are we having Vadivel the... Why, Vadivel Suresh. I mean, look, 
let's look at it sensibly. Mr. Ashu, now, now mm. if a layman assaults a police officer, I'm sure the police officer is going to be behind bars. But we saw a, a, in the parliament, um, a parliamentarian slapping a politician who was a safeguarding, a policeman. A, a policeman who was uh, uh, protecting the speaker. True. And he's scot free. Yes, but uh, is now, that exercising parliamentary privileges by the speaker no, or any not, of the parliamentarians? But I'm asking a more basic question. Will you vote for such a person who does such an act? Mm -hmm. Now, are people Sri going Lanka. to vote for them? Yeah, now, Sri that Lanka is Sri Lanka, but the point <laughs> is we have very short memories. Memory. And we, in that short memory, forget things very fast. So I'm asking, appealing to the people now, don't vote for any parliamentarian except the very honourable and honest fellows. Mr. Ashu, where is the IGP in this equation now? I, I think he, he is another wanderer. But, I mean, he wanted to he reduce Ranil Vikramasinghe's security forces, security. Then he earlier he was bowing down to Ranil Vikramasinghe. So I think these are all humbugs. In no, my because, view. because my thinking is now, where, uh, I, I recollect a uh, uh, parliamentarian. Mahindra Rajapaksa, as uh, Sonali has told me, uh, to not to mention him as the Prime Minister, I'm just going to use uh, parliamentarian uh, for Mahindra Rajapaksa. So when uh, parliamentarian Mahindra Rajapaksa was holding a press conference a few months ago, he said that the IGP was an utter joke and he should resign from his portfolio. However, now the IGP seems to be in this safe haven, in this yes, small yes, nest. Yes, and he's with really the, Ranil. With the I'm not a supporter of Ranil by any means. <laughs> I don't like Ranil at all. I think mm. he's not fit to be the Prime Minister or any, hold, any post in Sri Lanka. But you have to respect him. He is the elected leader of 106 members, who, oh, including Changpika Patali Ranavaka, who contested under UNP and they got 106 votes. But now 117 with the TNA support. We, that, that's TNA. That's, a, that's why it is a, still a national government. Because a national government, 92. a lot of people forgot, 92. is one government, one main party, and yes, several yes, small yes, parties. Yes, now there's the SLMC. 92 parliamentarians. No, no, 106. No, 117. 106, no, Mr. That is, that is, no, no. no, no. The support of other parties. I'm so saying. UNP, UNF. UNF as had a party has got 96. 106, because that is how the. That you have to look. 106. 106. You have to look at. Please, Mr. Sali, you have to look at the. Results from the Commission of Elections, what color, what symbol, what, what they contested on. And they, 106 votes were there, and Sri Sena was quite right in picking him up as the Prime Minister. But that, can, that equation changed. Because the, so the, lower number was, Mr. the lower number was with uh, the UPFA or the Sri Lanka Freedom Party at that point. So Mr. Dash is right when he says 106. Uh, the UNP uh, got no, I, the I checked it up before I came, uh, not today, but when I went to court, I told yeah. the court that, yeah. that, that, in fact, the Chief Justice asked me the question, or somebody asked me the question, how do you count? I said, you have to look at two results. Once the Commission of Elections results and then the Parliament yeah. voting patterns. Thank you very much. So I now move my attention to Dr. Atula Samarakon, uh, Department of Social Studies, Open University of Sri Lanka. Uh, Dr. Samarakon, uh, I'm trying to figure out um, the JVP right now, you know, um, they do have um, a voice and that really came to light only after the 26th of October 2018. Uh, before that, they were vocal but did not create a big impact in Parliament. But since of late, the last few months, the JVP vote, the six members, uh, played a very crucial role and they became like a deciding factor in this entire equation. Where does the JP really stand at present? Now, they're, they're, they're supporting the UNF uh, in courts. In the Court of Appeal, there were 122 members who went to courts against the appointment of Prime Minister uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa. However, now, where do they stand now? Now, a decision has been made. Uh, Parliamentary Mahindra Rajapaksa has said that he's going to courts tomorrow. So, where does it leave the, U, uh, the JVP right now? Yeah, well, Shashame, before coming to your question, I have yes. to clarify uh, my early remarks mm. on political violence, actually. Yeah. What I meant was that no civilized government in the wor world mm. would ever support political violence, mm. uh, kill its own mm. people like that. So in Sri Lanka, uh, 89, uh, during 89 and uh, during the 30 years of war, there, I mean, several of our uh, uh, civilians uh, 
uh, I mean, got killed. So, uh, so yeah. The, so, by UNP. I mean, yeah. By the so, UNP. I, I, I would say actually there has been much accusation uh, for those killings uh, on governments uh, during those periods. So, mm -hmm. so that is. Also that remember, terrorists also did a lot of yeah, killings. Yeah, actually, yeah, so LTT and uh, uh, all equation, other terrorists, uh, they also killed a lot of civilians. So, my whole point was that not that uh, the government purposely killed civilians. So, now coming to your question. Uh, now th this is this is actually popular view actually even uh, in in mainstream media that uh, you JVP's uh, current position. So what uh, it really uh, is doing at the moment. So in my observation as a political scientist, uh, scientist so I see that JVP is uh, tr is uh, trying to actually uh, reconstitute its uh, its uh, uh, political. Uh, positions uh, and uh, uh, it's it's using the current uh, crisis uh, to its advantage to a certain extent because it is not in an opportunistic way but uh, in a way that benefits the country so if you, if you look at the entire entire behavior of JVP during the la during the last few weeks so it has shown it has set a certain model uh, uh, for all the politicians of this country in the in the in Parliament it has behaved uh, in a civilized manner and even uh, it has gone to people and it, it, it has been educating the people on uh, various political issues so I think at the moment JVP has been uh, playing a very crucial role in educating the people of this country on democracy so that is actually a role which we cannot expect from expect from a traditional left party if my friend Eranda says that he is a lefty so I am really scared of him because I understand <laughs> that he, he is neither lefty no I is neither I, I, I don't think he's neither democ uh, democratic person as well so so I, I, so so neither left is no democratic so I, I so don't this, make any sense doctor. Yeah. No. don't make any sense no, so no, maybe maybe what is your point maybe, maybe. No, no, because uh, because if if, 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 no, no, if you look at the behavior of if you look at the behavior of the SLP now in so the it is neither no, supporting no, leftism yeah. no if it is neither supporting democracy I, I so think, it is, it is supporting think, only the authoritarianism yeah, in this, this is, country this is the problem Shamir these people play identity politics and party crazy. They don't understand what democracy no, is. No, don't, don't take it too personally. Say, I, 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 it is a different I, thing to say that you are very much like I, 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 need, I need to switch I, I need to switch to uh, uh, yeah, but don't, don't take it personally. So I, 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 I just wanted to answer actually on your previous remark. Just a minute, please. I think yeah. JV is doing a very great service because they are complying with the constitution. They are right. supporting, the, at the moment, they are not supporting either the UNP or the SLP. They are supporting the constitution. And if you look at the court orders, they are right on spot. Thank with you very both much. court orders. So, yeah, so, so let that. me open the floor uh, to. Uh, is, uh, isn't that uh, what you're yeah, doing, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Samarakon? Very quickly, 20 seconds, yeah. I'll give you to wrap up because I need to move to uh, Mr. Sali as yeah. well. Yes. Very quickly. Please yeah, I up. think uh, as Mr. Gomin Dayasri uh, rightly says, I mean, right now we have, we, we should, we, all the parties should try to actually get out of this uh, impasse. So mm -hmm. that, that is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I, in that sense, JP is also uh, doing a right. big role uh, in, the, in the current political scenario. Thank you very much. So I now move to Ms. Azar Sal, leader of the National Alliance. Uh, Azar, so l you still seem to be uh, from your heart right. a UN peer. I don't know why I say this, but. Uh, based on based on uh, based on uh, your affiliations that you've had, uh, if you had a chance to be a UNP -er again, would you join the UNP if there was a change in leadership within uh, the UNP itself? Let's say a Prime Minister, uh, former Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe decides to step down and someone else takes over the party uh, and and runs. If See, that's the case. Is there any chance for Azad Sali as an individual to join the UNP? See, um, uh, forget Azad Sali. Hmm. The whole country's problem will come to him now. Hmm. The crisis now hmm. is even if the UNP wants and if they have the majority, I am not going to give oath to Rani Vikramasinghe, says the president. So what is the solution? Everybody has to think about the country, what we are facing today. Somebody has to take a, take a step backward and think about the country's future and decide. Now, where is it going to go? It is going to come within your party. Just a change of leadership. Now, Samir, you remember the no-confidence motion. When the no-confidence motion was bought, we saw the young MPs coming out at Temple Trees and saying, we are changing the leadership. Now, only because the opposition has bought this, 
no, no convenience motion, we are going to vote. And they decided to vote, that also at the last minute they decided to vote to protect the leader, because that week itself we will be taking the Ruan Vijayawadana commission report and we will change the leadership. Was it told or not? That was a statement. What did they do? Months have passed after that. Why didn't they do the change? Every young MP was bribed by the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister. Yes, Everybody with responsibility. With responsibility. Mm. Everybody was made uh, um, um, uh, inspecting minister. Monitoring MP. Monitoring, moni monitoring mm. um, MP. member of MP parliament yeah. with a 200,000 rupees allowance mm. and a vehicle. vehicle. A small bribe that changed the lives of everybody in the UNP. All the people who voted with the UNP was so disturbed with this attitude. Now, Samir, where is this going to lead us to? Now, this is inside parliament, you see this fighting. Now, it has started in the provincial council. You see all the local authorities, when they summon a meeting, they are fighting, not only being carried away with the chair and thrown outside, then fed with cake <laughs> huh? to their mouth. Huh? All this has been done. Now, this is expanding day by day. Now, the villagers are going to start fighting. So, the whole country is coming to a chaotic situation. So, they have to think, and the president also should think, that we cannot allow the country to go like this. Everything is at standstill. What is the solution? The only solution is no mind, no runnil. Get the parliament, the parties that are represented in parliament, have a caretaker cabinet only. You don't need a you don't need a you don't need a, a deputy minister or state ministers. Only the 30 cabinet ministers are elected from parliament. Go for election. Why do anybody fear election? Go before the masses. Tell your grievances to them. They are the people who are going to but decide the who should govern the country. It, but if the constitution does not allow it. No, let, let, at let, at let, a chaotic but, situation like this, why, why, why? It will be allowed. But, but who Now see, that Samir, chaos? whether you like it or not, chaos, chaos. we saw day before yesterday, hmm. over 1,500 monks gathered at the Nelum Pogona. What did they ask for? Election. Give us the franchise to vote. Every, every town today is demonstrating, asking for election. No, but that if the people's wanting is election, if the majority of the people in the country wants election, that's what we is. have to give that. But why not go for a referendum? As Mr. Govinda, as he case. said, so, but, but he objected to parliament restricting, huh? well, stopping but, but, uh, the uh, people's mandate or restricting it to but, four but and a half years. The question Resolution. is not that, but the question is very simple. If, if the people want to go for an election, have a referendum, Ask for people's mandate, and everyone who voted in a Samir, government you are talking on the 17th of mandate, mandate to mandate whether we want mandate election or not. Samir, that's another not. expenditure, no, Samir. That is Can a country like Sri Lanka afford that? We may not but be able we, to vote, we, but yeah. we have to, please. Yeah. But we, can't, we can't afford. Yeah. I agree with you. We can can't afford but, a but, election. But, but we, have to, do it. we have to do it because we have to conform to the law. No, absolutely. So, so, so you want to conform to the law? Things. Why I mean, not? See, we, I, we saw I, this. I mean, I, I, early I mean, 1980s, come, come to the, the Lapu no, Kalagiri no, referendum I, that I, we had. If, I, I if give the, you are beating around the bush. I if the executive wants, yeah. and the registration is having a problem, right? Hmm. And now bringing in the judiciary also into it. Yeah. We need a solution. As masses, as people who bought the good governance government, we are talking. We are also people who gave our next to Rani Rikram Singh and Maitri Pala Sinatela. We also have the right to tell. Now we feel that you have to go for election. Why? The whole country is in a chaotic situation. Ah, sir, the no. villages are going to fight soon. Yeah. The provincial councils are fighting. But, the but, local governments but, are uh, fighting. You are not talking about me. No, I am no, 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 I, no, no, I, no, not talking about me. If, if, if I am talking about I, I will not be watching on television the masses that are coming onto the street asking for election. Mm -hmm. I am talking on behalf of everybody who is demanding for election. I am demanding the Buddhist monks who are coming and asking for election. So the Christian clergy is coming and asking for election. Does that Every represent, community leadership but, is but, asking for an election. But does that represent the 11 million people who are eligible to vote in Sri Lanka? Yes. That yes, is why, not? Is why not? Why not? Now the majority is that. Now in parliament, <laughs> in parliament to pass a bill you are asking for a majority. Yeah. And if the majority of the country wants an election, why can't we adhere to that? So, no, in parliament <laughs> you can decide with a anyway. two-third majority on election. Yes. Exactly. That is, that you is can, only you way. Now, now we saw Andro Kumar Adhisana, one minute, one minute. We saw Andro Kumar Adhisana making a statement last week in parliament and outside parliament. What did he say? We are bringing a resolution for dissolution of parliament. And that stopped all of a sudden. We never saw that motion coming up, but it was only a statement made. 
bring a d the motion for dissolution once the status quo is once, restored. Yeah, status quo is established. Yes. But, See, but, but that can be done with a two-third majority. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, so but what that's, I say, that's, you that's, need that's, a two-third. That's, that's you misleading can't because what Mr. Nisanaika said was we'll bring the, 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 we'll bring the, the uh, exactly. resolution for dissolution once the status quo is restored. You have to be, you no, but, 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 so but Aram, 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 we, we were discussing is, is executive and called? legislative overreach, right? Yes, By I what logic did the president decide that the government was failing, that the cabinet no, had ceased to exist, when on that same day, laws were being passed in parliament? What was the logic there? Uh, Aram, you can respond to uh, Azad and them, and then you can respond to Randim's uh, I, question. I completely agree with Mr. Azad Sali that... How, uh, why? Because, right, I'll tell you why, right? I agree with him that this should be now resolved by the people. Because people are the sovereign power and they should be given the chance to decide now. Now, this particular point that you guys are going back and forth on whether uh, the parliament can be dissolved or not is now a matter of court, court case, right? So we should actually not be talking about it. But let me, for the purpose, the purpose of clarity, tell you the, the facts, right? From the 19th Amendment, they brought in this clause to the 17th Constitution saying that um, unless Parliament requests the President to do so by a resolution passed by not less than two-thirds of the whole number of members, right? Now, this is a magnificent height. You know, you need the two-thirds of majority of the members of Parliament the members of parliament that we don't have any, any any trust now, right, to come together and voluntarily say, okay, now please resolve the parliament, right, which is near impossible, right? But uh, the uh, question uh, is why... Let, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. And he says, provided the that the president shall not dissolve it? parliament until the expiration of period of not less than four years. However, they, in the same 19th constitution, four years of four uh, they have, they have oh, put no, it, they have put to the 33, uh, co Constitution 33, uh, which states the uh, executive powers of uh, the, 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 the president. And it says here, in addition to the powers, duties, and functions expressly conferred or imposed on or assigned to the president by the Constitution. No, no, but by this Iran, Iran, wait, wait, let me, let me. Iran, or, let, or other written law, yeah. the president shall have the power to, uh, to summon, prorogue, and yeah, dissolve Iran, parliament. Iran, Iran, that's and the it question. does not Iran, say that, that is 33. That is 33. Iran, Iran, right? Iran, that is 33. Iran, 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 also, Iran, on the Constitution 62, let me finish, Shamir. Yeah. Right? Let but me Iran, finish, Iran, please. We, we've gone through this over and over again. Ah, I, right. I, I, we've go, gone through this over and over. The question is very simple. You're saying, you're saying, Iran, you're saying the people want an election. You say the people want an election. I, as an individual, don't want an election. You as an individual want election, but both of us are not representing the 11 million people of Sri Lanka. Sure. Did yeah. you see at least 100,000 people attending this protest? Tell me. The answer is no. no. Let's, let's talk about simple bolts and nuts. Let's talk about it the is, 11 million people. It is not people. a matter of whether it is 100,000 yeah, people but the or problem is, people or But the problem is, Eranda, you are not representing. You are not representing the people of Sri Lanka. Yeah, you I'm may not. want I'm you not. may want election, Yes. but that can be because of your political ideology. Let's take a count. There are four people no, no, here. It is not there are four people of... here. Aranda, let's be very pragmatic. Hmm. There are four people here and there are three journalists here. Okay. Yes. I ask you, do you want election right now in Sri Lanka? Yes. Yes. Uh, Samir, doctor, no, 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 we are only thinking Absolutely. in the long run what is going to happen to this yeah. country. So if it's that's the that's case, that's the individual the only thing that we have. Shami, it's an individual representation. I mean, that's the individual the representation. have forced us to go for elections. Yeah, so, so that's... We, we, we so again, but but these are yeah. individual yeah. They are again. Millions and millions of that rupees and dollars have been yeah. spent yeah. now. Shami, now you saw, even last week, Gunny bags of dollars were coming into temple, please. Agreed, agreed. All that, all that are more... Shamir, uh, agreed. please, please, yes. for God's sake, Shamir, please, th please, yeah. when Every somebody... Every senior member of the UNP is also paid. <laughs> let's not have, don't let's not have God in this equation, no. but, but, Shamir, but, but, yes. yeah. but this yeah. was a very bad thing that now you tried we, to do. No, no, it was so, very naughty uh, of you uh, to do it, right? <laughs>
Because, let me say, no, no, but there's a, there, there, see, not everybody who is asking for an election, just like that, you are not asking for yeah. an election. Yes. Not everybody who is asking for an election is asking for an election to appoint a particular party. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. right? We Agreed. are asking no, for no. an election because we believe that is the right this thing to do. This cannot be solved. This is okay. to solve the crisis. In order, in order to be so solved, there are ways to solve, there are ways to solve the crisis. So, 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 so the Mr. Ashish, what is your, what is your uh, thinking about all this? Now, please. There are different elections. We can have a presidential election which is within the law. That will decide because, as he said, the whole country votes for the president. Whole country votes at that time. Why can't we decide whether that can be an issue put by but the president? But that is not a problem right now. We can yeah. go for a presidential election. No problem. I, I, I you, would you are a prob you are problem, Mr. Because, because, Mr. Because, that goes back to what I was saying. I mean, given the fact that the executive, the as as the president dissolved a government that was passing laws in parliament on that same day that he was the one that took the step to dissolve that pal to to uh, fire that prime minister mm. and appoint a different prime minister on the same day that that government of which he was also the head was passing laws in parliament that very day yeah Given that he's the one that took that decision, don't you think that it is the presidential election that needs to happen first? No, no, see. And let all a, uh, ask, the voting pe people ask, of Sri Lanka have their say. You should also say why the president took that decision. Exactly. Why did the president uh, take that decision? Does the executive overreach into the legislature? Why did the executive, uh, why did the executive the... take a decision to uh, uh, dissolve the parliament? Why? Because in his opinion, the UPFA leaving, in his opinion, the UPFA leaving had, uh, or well, that's the justification that he has given, is that uh, the UPFA leaving had uh, had brought the you national know, government to an end. Things. You, you are talking about two different government. things. You are talking about October 26th one. You yeah. are talking about dissolution of the parliament, right? These are two separate incidents. That's what I'm incidents, saying. On the right? 26th of October... On the 26th, what happened that then was... I will tell you... I, that, I I'm, I'm saying, on the 26th of October, the parliament was passing laws. Yeah. That evening, the president decides to abolish... A, to, to annul a... or to, to uh, fire a government that was passing legislation in parliament that day. How? There was no gazette calling fire the mm. government, right? Well, All removing the prime minister no, 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 no. who was I, I passing legislation but, but in parliament that on that day. Yeah, so what does that... What, what is that because you can't have elections. That he, he, that he commanded the confidence of the majority of members of parliament. So he was passing laws on that day. Now, I think the anyway, yeah. Decide on this yeah, but, no, but no. we are talking about two different things. Now. One is the October 26th. No, I'm talking about October 26th. You are talking about the majority in parliament. Only now you are Talking, only now we see the majority, no? We never thought the JVP was supporting. No, I we saw never the majority the on the 26th as we, well, Ajib, because on the 26th we laws we were being passed the PNA in parliament. Would support. We only were going Mrs. on the Ali. basis of the UNF, because it was a national government. Yeah. Once the UPFA withdraws from the national government, there is no government, no prime minister also. The SLMC was also part of the national government. Then the has to come to 30. The SLMC is also part of the national government. Only because it was a national government, it has to have 40, but they had 42 cabinet ministers. You know that? 50, 50. That itself was a violation. That is wrong because yes. the, the defini there's a definition in the constitution as yeah. to what is a national, national government. government. National yes. government yes. is the single, one single party joining any other single or a single individual. Mm. So that no, 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 it says individual. Say, party no, or independent. Don't, 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 don't take here. Don't lie now. Right, right. We, uh, get me the constitution, okay. I'll show I will, you. I will, I, will, I will give you the constitution. You know, no, I'll any you, party or you independent see, group. I mean, you're just talking rubbish, man. What and are you I, talking? I, this is, I, this I, is the constitution. No, you give me the constitution. The constitution right? Give me the constitution. Right. It Why, says... I, I, give me the constitution. So let I me know. read. This is my constitution. Right. You should have brought your constitution. No, I don't. Right. I, I don't For the purpose of paragraph, I will give you after I read it. Right. Wait, wait. Be patient. Come on. Right. Come on. Be, come on. Okay. For the purpose of paragraph 4, national government means a government formed by the recognized political party or the independent group. Right. Right. Which obtains the highest number of seats in parliament together with the other recognized political parties or the independent groups. That's right. That's what it says. Yes. Right. So it didn't that say is individual. No, you said that individual. An independent no, group can individual. also be an individual. I said, I, if you remember, I said 106 members, including Champika Ranavaka, was the UNF. They no, contested. SLMC, a, SMG, a, all together. No, no, SLMC came separately. That came was the UNP. No, that came separately. No, 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 no. no, 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 no SLMC no, has no, one no, seat no, separately. They were one set. No, no. UNP, ACMC, SLMC were one set. Mr. Sali. The UNP has the UNP under the the elephant, the green color. There are 106 Six. members of parliament. 
there is one member of parliament, SLNC. Mr. Ali Zahir Maulana, only, who is from the SLNC. Yeah. No. Thereby, by, by, by that definition, no, no, no. by a recognized political that party forming an alliance no, with a recognized no, no, political no, no, party, okay, the national no, government still okay, exists. ACMC, SLMC is separate. No. Okay, no, let's say no, ACMC, no, no. SLMC no, no. is together with the UNP. No, 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 in parliament, the SLMC has one seat. Let's take your argument. What you are saying is, let's for argument's sake, let's take there were three parties. Whichever party, there were three parties. Now, your argument is these three parties came together to form a national government. Is that your argument? Yeah. Right. Now, according to the definition, when these parties come together, you form the A uh, national government, A X national government, right? When one party leaves, by the definition, when one or, or two, one party leaves, the X national government ceases to exist. No, it but wait, let no, me finish. Let me finish, please, will you? I, right? you you're but talking at the same point, at the same time, immediately after one party left, if the UNP uh, announced that we are forming a new yeah. Y uh, national government in partnership with JVP or TNA or SLMC or whoever, then it would have been the case. But, but obviously, Aranda, it didn't happen. Aranda, there are three parties in the national the government and only one left. How long did the UN have? <laughs> Aranda, Aranda, Aranda that, there are three parties. Not, that, that, there were three parties and only that's one that's left. Funny. There were three parties and only one left. Yeah. The other was still part of it. Thereby making it still and that national government, government minus what the UNP. What are the three parties? What are the three parties? My goodness. The UN, the UNP. Yeah. The UPFA yeah. and the SLMC. No. Yeah, that's right. As it's parties like, recognized yeah. in Parliament. So, the UPFA left, but the SLMC was still there. Yeah. Thereby, won. the national no, government no, 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 was still the there. SLMC won. No, no, it's SLMC. Doesn't matter whether it's, it's one, one or more. It's a one. Recogni doesn't matter. No, yeah. doesn't matter. No, no, As see, per the law, it's you know, still a national you know, government. You, know, Nadi, you didn't DVD. listen to me. There's can you DVD. please listen to me? No, wait, wait, wait. No, I'll give you an opportunity to. Mr. Ash, yes, you can talk now. Yes, I'll give you a few minutes to talk. What's the question you want? No, no, the question is very simple. The argument surrounding the national government the national uh, and, and government how has a definition function. which my friend read correctly and in that it means a national government is the single largest party joint criteria thank you you are class very that. generous no no i don't want generosity but i just read the section so uh, until uh, mr dashri uh, finds uh, the particular clause in question yes uh, yes you can yeah, add something actually, uh, why this the national UK government yes. came into being in 2015 january 8 so we have to go back to the original purpose of establishing this government so so what i see is that the government failed to keep the, to its promises so that is where the entire crisis uh, emerged uh, but ultimately we see this crisis uh, hanging around the executive and the legislative power. So I think executive could not uh, deal with, uh, properly with the legisl uh, legisl le legislative powers uh, uh, with, with the prime minister. So this tussle between the prime minister and the president ultimately uh, has br brought this result. So, uh, but that, that is the surplus view of this, superficial understanding of this uh, issue. So the, the, to, to to uh, describe this as uh, as resulting from this uh, crisis, uh, uh, I mean, a struggle between the president and the prime minister is just a superficial view. I would say this 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 crisis has been there for for since uh, the 1978 constitution was brought in, uh, because the parliament uh, was uh, actually undermined by the 1978 constitution whereas the executive was made uh, the superpower of this country so but by the time this unity government came in uh, to in into existence <coughs> that that idea was challenged the supremacy the super power uh, status of the president has been challenged today so the the, the unity in that that is the i mean major 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 feature of this unity government because it has challenged the executive power and uh, that is why the pre uh, president is hitting back. So today the president finds in the position that he is helpless. He, he is helpless because he has no uh, he has no majority in the parliament. The majority is with uh, with a different yeah. party. Yeah. He, he's, 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 uh, his his uh, his his own party members are crossing over to other party. Yeah. So he is in a crisis. So uh, so under in in this in these circumstances, the president is trying to reread the constitution, uh, reinterpret uh, the constitution yes. in his own way. So that is totally unconstitutional. President can never reinterpret the. Constitution Constitution by himself and uh, uh, gives uh, have has heard the orders. Uh, in 2015, I don't know whether you remember this, but um, the president uh, Maitri Pal Sirisena, when he was a candidate, he went on record stating that um, if uh, he has to call someone sir in the future, 
he's only going to call Ranil Vikram Singh uh, addressing him as sir. I'm trying to figure out right now the president, that same individual who said that a long time ago, is now saying that he will never appoint him in his lifetime uh, as the president uh, to appoint him as a prime minister. I'm trying to figure out what, why is this sudden hate towards this Sameer, man? I also might like you mm. and I also might decide to call you sir. Mm. Right? And when time, per, time goes on, in the one year, two year, three year, I will come to know that your motive is not the country, mm. but to rob the country. Mm. Right? What was the motive of the UNP today? <coughs> they, they decided to put Mr. Malik Samaravikrama in the scene and to take the total of how much Mahindra Rajabaksa and family robbed in the 11 years. They took the total and they decided that they will rob one rupee more than them. <laughs> that is the cause of the situation today. It is nothing but, not, you know, not only Mr. Vikram Singh, Malik Samarovic is the man who did this debacle to the entire United uh, National Party. That, that, that we know because we See, knew about the bank, one controversy we, we and saw, so on and so forth. Yes. The first thing they did, breaking of the central bank bond, which you all exposed. If not, not for Sirasa or your media, this would have not come up to this situation. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest exposure, that, that biggest robber in the country. What has happened to that? Right? Today they are even speaking about that bond commission report, which the because I was there in UK when this originally took place, yeah. right? President you know, immediately called Indian the Indian secretary time, yes. and called and told him, inform the Sri Lankan public, I am coming up with a commission. In half an hour we receive a call to Britain saying that the Prime Minister has already appointed a three bench, mm. three member committee, member committee, all lawyers of his own party. What happened to that? Nothing. What was the outcome of the report? Nothing. Then the president had to appoint a presidential commission. You know some of the latest revelation that we have got is before the president got the presidential report, the report was given to Mr. Vikram Singh. What a situation, what a state of affairs in the country. I hope you take full responsibility. I take sure. full responsibility. Ms. Ali, was told to me. Right, okay, so all this right? happened and, so and, the, now, president, yeah, and now, the president decided this is, to... Wait till you. Yeah. Then the, the respect for that man, right, even at the last rally, president was at home. After the Moratua meeting, his state went home, he didn't want to come because there was the information that there can be problem at the Mardana is the final meeting. Mr. Vikram Singh went and bought him. After that, they had the annual convention of the UNP. I went with the president. They made a statement of what sacrifice Ranil made. All that is okay. Right? Country wanted a change. Country wanted the Rajapaksas out. For what? The white van abduction, killing of journalists, so now setting up fire back. to all your television stations. Yeah. All that is true. Yeah. But why the people wanted that change because of that? And we get a government who is saying we are good governance. And you repeat the same thing. So, so now the Rajapaksas came into power on the 26th of uh, October, and they appoint Nala Godeva as the chairman that is, of that the That's why president said, no, I have immediately given instruction that he should be removed. Not only that, as uh, Mr. Govinda has said, we also still feel that the president should have never appointed Vimal Viramansa. The president should have never appointed Johnson Fernando. Why? All these people who, are, who is having cases, court cases, should not have been appointed to this present cabinet. We are there with you. We are there. What we want, whoever who does it should do the right thing. We are always to justify that because we are moving with the people and we know the pulse of the people. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for even your thoughts. Today, um, even today, even today, whether anybody likes it or not, there are two rallies in the country. You know? One was at Maradana, one was at Gaul. Yeah. See the strength and the crowd. Where was the crowd? So you might say, with the crowd, can we decide on an election? No. What are we saying is go around the country, everybody, both sides are having meetings in the country, take the poll. So mm. Sirisa can start a poll whether this country must go for election or not. Thank That's you very a good much. thing thank for you. Very much. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for your thoughts in the uh, first four rounds. Uh, we're now going for a short commercial break. Uh, we would return with the final round. Stay connected, stay with Face Nation. We will be right back. Welcome back. Uh, this is the final round. Before I uh, go into the final round, I want to give Sonali one question to uh, pose to the panelists and then we go in for the final round. Yes, Sonali. Um, Very quickly. 
Eramda, there's a school of thought that uh, Sri Lankans are disempowered, that it's very easy to buy them over with a rice packet and some liquor or some silredi or a sari uh, in exchange for their vote. But something that we saw in the recent past is, is how uh, Sri Lankans, how professionals have really risen up to the occasion. We saw movements like Rise Up Sri Lanka. We saw other Let me um, pro professionals come together really uh, being passionate to make a change, a positive change for Sri Lanka. And, and, and I ch personally choose to believe that Sri Lankans are resilient um, and enterprising. Now, on the other hand, we have issues um, such as uh, racism, youth violence, uh, sexual harassment and frustration, uh, poverty. Um, so my question to you is, what must the um, civil society, entrepreneurs, uh, young, passionate people do uh, in order to take Sri Lanka onto the right path? I mean, there are isolated efforts all over the place, but there is no one collated, collected uh, body as such. Um, in your opinion, what must these Sri Lankans do? I think uh, we should do more of what we are doing right now. Okay. Sunali. And I, I absolutely love, I think it's probably the best thing that happened from this whole uh, crisis is that, remember, you know, we have always been telling the youth are not engaging, they're not participating in, 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 in democracy and in governance, and the, the professionals are not coming forward. But now you see it's happening, right? So now we should be happy about it, and we should encourage them to uh, come forward, right? But let them have their own political ideologies and let them have that debate, because debate is part of democracy. You know, the, the first thing you need to do is debate, and then only you go for a decision. So I think it is absolute. I'm 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 thrilled that that we have uh, you know emerging vibrance of professionals and young people, entrepreneurs, educators, all coming forward and and having this discourse. I think it's absolutely beautiful. We should do more of it. But should we try to organize it as one big body? I don't know because see. Every other country has these these kind of movements, and they are very natural. They are very organic. I think it should you should leave it like that. You know, if at all, what the media can do it and should do is to support them and sort of uh, amplify their voice uh, and give them more platforms to express themselves and have those uh, those lively debates. So that's a, that's a, that's a brilliant thing that is happening. On the other other side, that you you mentioned about the the, the issues that we have, you know, the social issues, the environmental issues, the economic issues that we have. See those issues, Sonali. Yes, I'll finish. Those issues, we are not going to solve them overnight. These issues are there all around the world. We will have to come up with good policies to solve them. I right. know. I know so we are uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. No, yeah. it's so it's a final round. Minute, huh? Yeah. A very good question that you asked him. Yeah. But today, what do you think of the people of this country? Now we see what is happening in Parliament. We have identified people also. Next election, you mean to say that he will get less vote? He will get more than that. Yeah. This is Sri Lanka. Anyway, uh, so people let's... don't want the right thing to happen. They don't want the good people to come. That will never happen. All these Tradas will come back to parliament again. Right, so let's, let's uh, so move to the final round uh, uh, tonight on the show. Uh, we're talking about, uh, uh, about the future of Sri Lanka. I want to start off the final round with uh, Dr. Atula Samarakon. Uh, from uh, the Open University of Sri Lanka. He represents the Department of uh, Social Studies. Uh, Dr. Atula, given all this, right, is there a glimmer of, glimmer of hope for Sri Lanka, at least now? You know, you see, um, you see uh, the JVP, the UPFA. Let's put all these political parties aside for a moment, for a minute, and let's think about the country's future. Do we still have a glimmer of hope? Is Sri Lanka still a resilient nation to move forward? The time starts now. Yeah, well, uh, I'm very much optimistic of our people because uh, whatever happens uh, uh, with the politicians, whatever their policies, their corruptions, uh, etc., so people have been so, uh, so calm and people have been so uh, very much, uh, very much uh, actually, uh, they, 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 they never wanted to, I mean, uh, uh, be violent uh, like in other countries. So if, if this kind of political crisis uh, uh, ever uh, took, uh, ever uh, happened in, uh, in, in, in authoritarian uh, 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 countries, so people would have taken to roads. Huh? They, they would be in, on the streets and uh, fighting uh, with violent means. But our people uh, with 
uh, with their democratic mindset, so still they, they have been very much peaceful. So I, 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 I don't think that our political parties can, uh, can uh, mis mislead them at all. So our people are, are, are very much educated in a way because uh, we have a free education system. But the problem with our people is that uh, so once they b belong to a party, they will continue with that uh, irrespective of the policies, the character of the politician that, that those parties have. So that is where we need to, we need to educate people on democracy. So democracy is not that you choose a party and you stick to that party forever. So democracy should be based on pol policies. So our people should understand that the, 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 uh, the path, the future should uh, lie with the, uh, is, uh, uh, with the policies of the pop political parties and not, not with the characters, not with the charismatic leadership. So our people should not uh, uh, keep worshipping some political leaders or, or go, go after uh, the incentives that the political parties uh, throw at them. So, so, uh, so until uh, the people are in ignorance, people are not well informed. This, this type of political scenario can take place anytime in Sri Lanka. But the, I, I, I am very much optimistic that we can talk to people. So they, we can educate these uh, people because th th there are conditions for that. There are conditions because they are, they are, they are much literate. They are, li they are more literate than the people in many of the South Asian countries. Much, so uh, we can take yeah. advantage of that uh, li literacy of the people. And the problem is our media is today divided. So they, they try to create their own public opinions on uh, nationalist political stance. Stand so this is wrong actually. Thank so what, what media and the intellectuals all have to do is to educate people. Thank you not, not that you should create public opinions and you should uh, uh, put that into their brains. So you should educate the people and uh, enable them to talk freely, uh, empower them. So Thank those are the... No, I, I will come minute, to you. Minute, minute, minute. No, no, I, I will come to you in a minute, uh, uh, Mrs. Ali. I'm sorry, I can't give you an opportunity to speak because I need to give equal opportunity to all the speakers here. I now move to um, Mr. Govind Ashri, senior attorney at law. Uh, Mr. Ashri, uh, he's ready with the constitution. Uh, no, no, I'm not uh, right. So let, let's not let's not talk about the constitution. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it was very nice of uh, Eranda to give very the constitution good, to you <laughs> in a very democratic framework. I must say that Eranda. Uh, giving uh, the uh, constitution to Mr. Ashri was a very nice gesture. Uh, Mr. Ashri, yes. um, on the 7th of uh, December, there is going to be an important verdict for Sri Lanka. Uh, whether there is going to be an election, yes or no. Uh, you see, you before see, that, Mr. Yeah. Ashri, before that, uh, right now, as we speak, the Court of Appeal made an, a verdict as well. So uh, parliamentarian Mahindra Bajapaksa will go to court, Supreme Court tomorrow. Uh, we, are, we, are, we don't... We don't have any concrete evidence to that uh, at the moment, but uh, it's likely that he would go to the Supreme Court tomorrow. But given all this, what has happened in Sri Lanka over the last few days, last few weeks, do you think that we can stand up again? We can be that nation that ended a 30-year-old uh, conflict. We are a nation that uh, was worst affected by the 2004 tsunami. We had an uh, individual who won the silver medal, uh, who won uh, the silver medal at the Olympics. We have a nation that won uh, the Cricket World Cup in 1996. Do you still think that we are a resilient nation to I, I think, brave I think, all this and come, uh, come forward? I think, Shamil, we are a very stoic nation. We can stand up to a lot of things mm. and we, we have to be put against the wall to, for us to stand. And that is what terrorism did. They put us against the wall, we fought back, we won. But I don't know, Shamil, this time I'm a little pessimistic because of the politicians. I mean, all these things were done not necessarily by politicians. It's outside, it's the people that won the war. Now, my question is this. Now, I think the courts have done uh, extremely a good job by saying that Ranil Vikramasinghe is going to be the, is the proper prime minister. Now, nobody wants Ranil. Now, as somebody said, we want elections. But we can't say nobody wants running. Most people don't want. So it's up to the UNP if they want to have a credible chance of winning the next election to be led by a leader other than running. And they have leaders. SLAP has leaders. Now, I would say the SLAP's best candidate at the moment is Gota Abe Rajabaks. And UNP has Prema Dasa. Now, why don't... And I know the two of them are pretty close. 
and they would do a, they would do a good balancing between themselves. So I think we have a future. But but Goda with Rajapaksa can't contest the election. He can't. That is the problem. He can't. So, so that's wishful thinking for us to even very suggest wishful that thinking, he but he won't election. be able to do that. You're quite right. Then again, there are other problems. We saw what happened in Parliament. I think that's a very good thing. That's the glimmer of hope. People are so sick of parliamentarians. They will throw. Will they throw them out? I doubt. Will just like I said, will we have Rani Vikram Singh out? I doubt. If Rani Vikram Singh goes, undoubtedly, Mahindra Rajapaksa will have to go. Because the other party will agitate. If Rani can go and take a back seat, why can't Mahindra? I told him two days after the general election, sir, you should now, no, Chalad Puttuma, you should now take a gracefully retire, take a back seat. He didn't like it. And, and what was his response? His response I, was, he, I no. thought he was unhappy. He never expected me to say that. And after that, I don't think he consulted me ever. I was his lawyer. I, I told him frankly, he never consulted me after that. Uh, maybe that or maybe something else. But whatever it is, he's entitled to, who, to choose select his lawyers. But I must say, he as a client, he was a very good client. He did ex ex everything that we told him to do, and he did it. So leaving that aside, I think Sri Lanka first needs Ranil and Mahinda should both leave the political platform. And with that, I think that we should get back to a two-party system of UNP and the SLP. This little, uh, Thank you very much. I think uh, little buds should be demolished, I think, Thank totally. You. And I also think, the last thing may I say, I think we need a new set of parliamentarians. We need a new, new set of young people who are take in the forefront. As somebody said, they are getting agitated, they are getting involved. Good. Let them come forward and we will have a better Sri Lanka. That's Thank the only way much. I think we can make Sri Lanka. Thank, Thank you very you. much, uh, Mr. Govinda Ashri, Senior Attorney at Law. I now move my attention to Eranda Ginige, former founder chairman of Social Enterprise Lanka. Eranda, you made a valid point, you know. Uh, you, you speak about uh, how important it is for professionals to come uh, to the forefront. Uh, there are many names that are coming out, you know, uh, Rohan Palwata's name has been coming out uh, for, for, for a, as a future presidential candidate. You hear a lot of names of professionals also in the midst of all this and more. So you also being a professional and you and as an individual who promotes uh, the ideologies of, of professionalism, uh, democracy, education, and all that and more. Uh, what is your stand uh, right now? Who, who do you think Sri Lanka should vote as the next president or the next prime minister? If there was, any, It's a very hypothetical question. I know you don't have a... Um, crystal ball in front of you to uh, predict the future, but as an individual and a professional, uh, what is your take? So very simple. Again, Shamir, we keep uh, we are conditioned to think uh, based on identities, individuals. That is not democracy. This is the this is the wall that I'm trying to shatter. You know, we should not de decide based on who is running and what is that per. You know, we should look at that person's policies. And if that person's policies resonate with your political ideologies, and if that if you think that that person is capable of delivering the policies that he or she is promising, then you may uh, choose to vote for him. But at the end of the day, remember that in the constitution it says sovereignty. What is sovereignty? So sovereignty includes the powers of government, fundamental rights, and the franchise. Franchise, suffrage, the right to vote right to vote, uh, uh, universal suffrage, these are, these are grand words in the human civilization. These were won with blood and sweat by people. And we first got this in 1931. So when, when you are deprived of uh, using your right to vote for at least three and a half years, if they conducted, if the government at least conducted the provincial council's elections, people would have had, a, had an opportunity to show their displeasure or their pleasure, uh, and, and the people would have gotten a chance to express themselves, but they were not given that chance. This is why we say it has come to a point that people now need to show their decision, people need their voice, people need their right to vote, and that is the reason why we say, please give us the right to vote. And with humble, hu with humbleness, we earnestly request uh, the uh, the judiciary to consider the people's request. We, the people of Sri Lanka, need our right to vote and resolve this current crisis right. that is happening in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, Berat um, I, I must. Uh... 
I, I, I must mention to our viewers that Randa is entitled for his own opinion, um, and uh, he could make his remarks based on um, his uh, ideologies. But we as a network uh, have a different uh, opinion completely on all this and more. I, for, I, I now move to uh, <laughs> Ms. Azad Sali, uh, leader of the National Unity Alliance. Um, Azad, interestingly, uh, we hear uh, the recent murder of uh, Jamal Khosruji, who is who, who's a, uh, Ameri who's a, who's a uh, so, uh, so, so, Saudi, uh, who holds an American passport, uh, who was killed um, in Turkey. Let's not look uh, far from Sri Lanka. Let's talk about Sri Lanka. You know, in, in 2009, we saw the killing of Lasanda Vikramadunga. Um, Pragit Eknali Gore is still at large. And this is a nation that saw Jamal Kasuji's deaths happening over and over again. And individuals like you were behind bars uh, for things that uh, you may have not even committed or you were not uh, part of, part two. You, do you think that we are sliding back to that era again? And doesn't this worry you as a part leader from a minority party? Doesn't this worry you? Uh, this has been my worry right throughout uh, in the last three and a half years. As I told you earlier, we all work so hard to bring a good governance government to do that. I was surprised to see Lasantha Vikramadunga's daughter writing to the president. Mm. She should have actually written to the prime minister, why did you do this to my father? My father was so close to the UNP. My father was almost going to contest in the UNP. He was going to be a nationalist MP in the UNP. How dare after my father's killing that you did not take any action? Only an appointment of making Lal Vikramadunga an ambassador in Australia and his wife Sonali to the US embassy it was the only solution given to that family. Three and a half years, what did they do? Lasanta's killing, nothing. Tajuddin murder, nothing. Just see, even that 11 children who were killed by the Navy, right? Today they will come and say, Dadam Karno Hamudav. Nobody wants to do Dadam to the Hamudav. If the Hamudav does wrong, even you do a wrong, he does a wrong, I do a wrong, everybody has to face the situation, right? That is why we want a court of law to take the independent stand. So today all these things have today come against the UNP. Nothing was done. We saw millions and millions of dollars in various bank accounts. Even statements came from Dubai. Statements came from Seychelles. They were showing all that. Who was blocking? Who was stopping? What did the three and a half years Rani Vikram Singh government do? Nothing. When the uh, uh, Tajuddin family went and met the president. I took them more than three to four times to meet the president. The attorney general was summoned and told, what are you doing? Even now, why they were making a big UN cry about the transfer of Nishanta, right, from the CID. What did the president say? You're only just finding facts, reporting to court, arresting people. Now on Tajuddin's murder, Andhra Senanayaka was locked up for more than one year. No cases filed. Lasantas, no cases filed. So, now they say, we are still awaiting Attorney General. You remember, Samir, when the, as soon as the government came and when the Attorney General made a remark saying, we don't have people, mm. we very clearly said, if you don't have people, recruit people. Because mm. a government can last only five years. Now, this has lasted only three and a half years. Right? It had to go so fast. If they last for five years, they have to solve these cases also immediately because the next government is not going to investigate these things, right? All the robberies that took place, all the state institutions that were uh, robbed, nothing happened. The Greek bond, nothing happened. Why all these things? So the, this was the aspiration of the people. As the doctor said, in any other country, you will see the people coming, people coming and uh, trying to form the government again, not allowing this to happen. Definitely this would have happened to the UNP. Why they didn't come, why the people were reluctant to come, is they never got what they wanted. Three and a half years of rule only made money for, the, for their henchmen. Mr. Much. Malik Samarikram and the group robbed the country. This I will openly, openly say. And people who were pinpointed as people like Lokovitarn, they, they were, these were the people who were protecting the investors of the Rajapaksa family. What happened? They were bought to Sri Lanka. They were given the Horner Tire Factory. They were given every other project to be done. 
So we never wanted a good governance government to come and rob the way they rob. Thank so you, you also rob and they also rob. So both are rogues. So now, now as, as everybody says, the independent people, as Sonali said, the right thinking people, they will all come. But the same rogues will only come to power. Thank you very much. No right-minded people are going to vote or no right-minded people are coming back to politics. Thank you very much. See what will uh, happen. Thank you very much, Adha Sali, uh, leader of the National Inter Alliance. Thank you very much, Mr. Gomindashi, for joining us uh, this evening on the show. Uh, we um, hit um, uh, 11.45, so it's time to go now. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashi, for joining us this evening on the show. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Azad Sali, leader of the National Union Alliance, for joining us on the show. It's always a pleasure to have you on board. Dr. Atul Samarikon, uh, representing uh, the Open University of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yeah, Samarikon, for joining us as an academic on the show tonight. And thank you very much, um, Aranda Ginige, founder, chairman of Social Enterprise Lanka, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you on board. Aranda, looking forward to seeing you on the show tonight uh, very soon as well in the future. Not as a politician, I must tell you that, uh, but um, uh, as, the, as an individual who's doing his good work uh, for Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, uh, Sonali. Thank you very much, Nadine, for joining us on the show. Sonali is also for giving us this opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, to do so. Uh, Sonali is also an attorney at law. It's uh, always nice to have you on board, Sonali, uh, and part of the show tonight. I leave you tonight with a quote, as I always do. Success comes not from having certainty, but being able to live with uncertainty. What I've been looking for? Success. <laughs> Take care and good night.